live from Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas, it's Lobo football. Tonight, it's the University of New Mexico Lobos against the Rice University Owls. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Lobo football on Q13. I am Mike Powers. This is a, a, an important game for the University of New Mexico Lobos. The Lobos come in 4-1, and one, riding high, playing very well. The Rice Owls are 1-3 and three and have been struggling on both sides of the ball. And if you can tell behind me, it is raining, has been most of the day, and that could very well affect what we see on the field tonight. Let me bring in my broadcast partner now, Andrew Paul from the Sports Animal in Albuquerque. And Andrew, no question about it, this is a very significant game for the New Mexico Lobos. Yeah, the Lobo coaches will love nothing more than to be 5-1 and one going into the bye week next week. If you're wondering how important they canceled recruiting visits yesterday to spend more time with the players in preparation for tonight's game. The New Mexico Lobos coming off one of their best games during the Dennis Franchoni era. They rolled over TCU, and they did it on the strength of that running game. Yeah, the running game has been the huge strength for the Lobos. They're 10th in the nation in rushing so far this season, under 260 yards a game. And the big strength for this offense is that offensive line. Mm -hmm. Big guys in the offensive line, Brandon Turner, Andy Gleason, really the anchor of that offensive line. In last week's game, the Lobo offensive line combined for 127 knockdowns. If you're wondering how significant that is, a team record under head coach Dennis Franchoni. Pretty hard for the defense to make tackles when they're on their backs. Meanwhile, the Rice Owls, as we mentioned, have been struggling offensively. They just haven't been able to get it done, although they have played some outstanding com uh, competition. The guy they look to is the quarterback, the first option for them. Yeah, if you like passing, well, forget it. You're not going to see it tonight. This is a running team, an option team. Chad Nelson, their quarterback, averaging 53 yards passing per game, 39 yards rushing per game. Not exactly impressive numbers. When we talk about Donald Sellers, a Lobo quarterback later, you'll see the huge difference. That spread option, though, can put a lot of pressure on the Lobo defense. And it's those safety guys, the ones who may be anxious to fudge up, who better be careful. Yeah, it's going to be a, a big difference for the Lobo safeties today than usual. They're used to blitzing and a passing attack. Today, though, they're going to have to try to control this option game. Scott McGarrahan, Billy Austin, a couple of juniors, real big on that defense, which has helped force 11 turnovers already this season. Coaches have been stressing all week, this is assignment football. You have a certain job to do. Don't get too crazy. But then again, Coach Fran doesn't want them to forget what has gotten them here, and that is an exciting uh, running defense chasing the ball. He said in three days, you can't change the defensive scheme that much. So you, you will see the Lobo defense still blitz. However, the big difference tonight, though, if they blitz and miss, you could see Rice with some big plays. Okay, New Mexico and Rice coming up. It's whack football from Houston when we come back. Powers on headset here. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Right. Okay. Very good. I'm going to stand. Goes receiving, so so Rice won it. That will be um, Sellers. There's a look at uh, important numbers for this game: the weather here in Houston. The temperature about 69 degrees. That's not the problem. The problem is the wind and the rain. It has been raining all day since overnight, and it continues to drizzle right now here at Rice Stadium and the wind the 5 to 10 you saw on the graphic there that may be a little bit light because it is swirling down on the field and I think that will greatly affect at least the kicking game here this evening. Let's look at the Rice Owls coached by Ken Hatfield 
This is the very first Western Athletic Conference game played here. And there's a look at the New Mexico Lobos getting ready to receive. The Lobos uh, will be receiving to start the game. Rice won the toss, deferred to the second half, and New Mexico will take possession to get this thing started. So look at Dennis Franchoni, first, uh, fifth year at the University of New Mexico, and in the midst of his best start ever with the Lobos. In fact, this is the best start for the Lobos uh, since 1984 and uh, have played exceptionally well. There's a look at the numbers right there. They were 5-1 in 1982, and New Mexico looking to match that. Mike, Lobo fans will remember when the Lobos took on Central Florida at home a few weeks back. It was a rainy day in Albuquerque. The field was a mess. Lobo players and coaches feel that actually playing on the AstroTurf tonight after a rainy day, the field will be in better condition. They prefer to play on the fake stuff than the real stuff after it's been raining as much as it has. And that Central Florida game ended up a 17-7 game. Wasn't decided until late in the fourth quarter. And uh, I think the Lobos were hoping for a fast track here where maybe that offense, that explosive offense, uh, would be able to get on track. And we'll see if they can do it. Well, there's a good indication of the wind down on the field as it knocks the ball off the tee. We'll see how it affects the game. It's going to be a small crowd tonight. Uh, it's rainy. It's, it's good football weather sometimes. But I think the Lobos will be very happy tonight. Get out of here with a victory. No one get hurt. and Just go home. Prepare for the next game two weeks from now. And another look at Scott Grimes, waiting for the officials to give him the go-ahead to boot it away. Waiting back for New Mexico, number one, Larry Brown. And number 24 for the Lobos is Jamie Oliver. And again for the second time, the wind blows it off. And you couldn't, you can't really tell from up here that, it, that it's that windy down on the field. You've got the flags on the goal post, which are moving considerably, but you wouldn't think enough to blow the ball right off the tee. But there's a shot of how where we're at high above the stadium how the wind is whipping around now they'll use a holder so we can finally get this game underway unless he gets blown over by the wind <laughs> and the whistle sounds and maybe we can get going mike powers along with andrew paul with you glad you could be with us on lobo football here on q13 the kick is a deep one and nobody will have a chance to return this one. So the Lobos and Donald Sellers will take over at their own 20. New Mexico 4-1 and one, off to that great start, and they want to keep it going here in rainy Houston tonight. Well, the Lobos did not win the toss. Rice did. They decided to defer and get the ball to start the second half. Dennis Franchoni had told us that if they won the toss, they'd accept the ball first. Usually, Dennis Franchoni likes to defer and take the ball in the second half, but he thought this Rice team with the option could really wear and tear and take a lot of time off the clock. He'd rather get the ball first tonight. There's a look at Donald Sellers. Outstanding year for him. 14th in the nation in total offense. They lift, list him from Birmingham, Alabama. He played his college ball, or high school ball rather, and college ball, junior college ball in Texas. And a nice little gain on first down for the New Mexico Lobos. Thomas Benford made the tackle, the linebacker for the Rice Owls. And Donald Sellers has a lot of outstanding players helping him out. These are the skilled players. Lennox Gordon, three 100-yard games already. Chris Shelton is the fullback, nursing a tender ankle. He has not been 100%. Shane Jagger leading the offensive line right now, set a Lobo record for knockdowns last week against the Horned Frogs. Second down now and four for New Mexico after that gain of six yards. Lennox Gordon will get back to the line of scrimmage maybe before he's brought down. The ball came out, and I believe they'll whistle it dead, yes. Now the defense for Rice. And Duque Kalu is the uh, number one man, all-time leading sack man for the Rice Owls. The linebackers, a solid group of Reynolds, Benford, and Masick. And the defensive secondary, four picks or two picks between these four here so far this season. And the Lobos believe they can run on these guys. Third down and officially three. Chris Shelton taking his time. Lots of time on the game clock. On the play clock, rather. Jeremy Banks calling out to other wide receiver. Here's the draw to Banks, or rather to... Lennox Gordon, and he will be very close to the first down. I think he's got it. Yeah, needed to get out past the 30-yard line. I think he did. He stretched out at the end there, Mike. 
Lennox Gordon, as you mentioned, three 100-yard rushing games already this season coming in. Looking to eclipse the 1,000-yard mark this season if he can stay healthy. A little bit of a delay there. Switch back the other way. Good blocking ahead. That Lobo offensive line, very talented. Lunges for the 30. See if he got it there. Yeah, I think he clearly crossed the line, and officials gave him a good spot. Dennis Franchoni, of course, doing uh, a lot of the play calling on the sidelines. Dennis Darnell is the offensive coordinator, but uh, Dennis Franchoni gets his hand very much in this Lobo offense. First and ten, initial first and ten of the ball game now. They give it to Shelton. No, the pitch to Gordon on the far side has the corner and has ridden out of bound. Bounds after a gain of seven. It was Carlin Bedford there to push him out. Well, since Rice primarily runs the option, you'd figure they'd be used to seeing it in practice every day and may give the Lobos a tough time running that option. That was a nice decision by Sellers to pitch. Some people complain that he keeps the ball too much on the option. That time gave it off to Gordon. But what made that play successful was the fake to Shelton first. They're going to give it, they have to give it to Shelton a couple of times though today for that play to really become effective. Two tight end offense for New Mexico. Two receivers, bottom of your screen. And Lennox Gordon is the lone setback. He can carry the ball a lot, does right there. Good surge by that line up near midfield, a bit shy of it, and it'll be a first down for the New Mexico Lobos. Driving the ball right here on the ground, which is what we thought they'd try to do. Absolutely, haven't put the ball in the air yet. In fact, I think Dennis Franchoni would be more than happy to go the entire game without putting the ball in the air. If they can keep it on the ground, take time off the clock. Lennox Gordon straight up the middle. Watch the blocking clear this hole. Unbelievable blocking there. There's Kevin Ned, number 71. You see him clearing out some space. Gordon, a very talented running back, but it certainly makes his job easier when an offensive line does its job. Gordon with five straight carries to start the game for New Mexico. Full house backfield now. Full eye on first and ten. Now Roy White comes out of the backfield, sets up at his tight end slot. Up the middle, Shelton. And that's exactly what you were talking about there as Bedford makes the tackle again. Well, when we see Rice in offense, there's three options to the option is really what it is. They call it a triple option. They, you have to dive to the fullback, which the Lobos choose here uh, with Chris Shelton. The other options, of course, are the quarterback keeping it or pitching it to a halfback. Chris Shelton with a nice carry there and a nice gain. It'll obviously help create that fake to him later in the game more effective if he's able to gain some yardage on the dive. All right, second down and three. Lobos have kept it on the ground. This might be an interesting place to try play action. Let's see what Dennis Franchoni wants to do. Dennis Gordon, he's hit and stumbles forward. Maybe a gain of two. And that'll bring up another third down. Rashad Reynolds, the linebacker number 44, makes the stop. And there's a Rice Owl down on the, on the field right now. We just saw a moment ago Donald Sellers passing stats on the season, 920 yards passing. When you combine his running and passing yards, he's already rushed this season for 388 yards. That's a huge chunk of what he had all of last year in 11 games. Andy Clifton on the field while they're working on him. We'll take this time out. Say, Howard, sorry I didn't bring this up earlier. Is there a chance that um, uh, we could make a highlights package that I can send back at the end of the game? Thanks. Yeah, I know, I know, I, I know. I, hey, well, I've stumbled out of the gate here, so, okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Do you want to switch? No. Because it would be, because then I'd do the spot over here. No, that's too bad. That's too bad. Okay. 
And welcome back to Rice University, New Mexico, and the Owls are scoreless. And we want to welcome all of you Balloon Fiesta folks watching our coverage out at the Fiesta Park tonight and back in your hotel rooms. Wish all of the competitors in the America's Challenge gas balloon race all the best and we certainly hope your weather is better than what we've got here tonight flag before the play starts off and we'll check and see what the heck it is down there false start number 76 offense five yard penalty and there you have it first penalty of the ball game it was on Andy Gleason who has been uh, nursing an injury in his left hand in fact it's a broken left hand that he's been playing with a cast with a pad on it so but he's doing an outstanding job for the next one played at BYU with the injury and played uh, last week as well against TC and there's a look at Andy Clifton maybe a knee injury they're working on him on the sidelines that play looked like it was broken up but the pitch is a clean one to Lennox Gordon who was really yardstick on third down uh, Carlin Bedford came over and pushed him out of bounds and that will bring up a likely fourth down situation for New Mexico. Yeah, I don't think he got it, Mike. I think he did come up short. Nice defensive play there by Bedford, driving Gordon out of bounds. The Lobo shuffled in some new players after that penalty, made it third and six rather than third and one. But an odd play call there. The Lobos still have yet to put the ball in the air. And we'll see what happens here on fourth, and I think you'll see him punted away. Well, let's see here. They have... Now, now they put the fourth down on the marker, but the Lobo offense stays in, and, and let's see if they run a play. Oh, they are going for it. Yeah. And or, or maybe just try to draw them offside. Draw them offside. They're good at that. Or at least they picked it. Hot lane in motion. They're going to run it. Up the middle and leaping for the first down is Lennox Gordon. Well, that's a heck of a play call. I like that. What aggression here right away. The Lobos don't want to give Rice the ball to start. I mentioned during the pregame, I think it's real important that the Lobos score first tonight and go to that ball control offense. Lennox Gordon right over the top, Shelton the lead blocker, and Kevin Ned comes in to clear some space. Nice job. I really like that play call there by Dennis Franchoni. I thought they were just going to try to draw the Owls off sides. Well, Rice blocked three punts last week against Air Force. That might have been a consideration. And also, uh, you know, the Lobos wanted to prove they could do it on fourth down because they're only one of seven coming into this game on fourth down five. Here comes the first pass of the game. Maybe. Sellers looking for something. Scrambles out of there. Down to the 30 and finally ridden out of bounds in the secondary. The linebacker Thomas Benford pushed him out. But that was an odd play because the Rice Owls had penetrated, but they I think they lost track of it. Yeah, they did. The play action is so effective for the Lobos when the running game is good. Look at this stats. Averaging under just under five yards per carry. And folks, that includes minus yardage for sacks. That's how impressive he is as a runner. Donald Sellers, not just the second leading rusher on the Lobos, but the eighth leading rusher in the WAC. Nobody got open downfield. Give the Rice secondary some credit. And then watch this guy run into him right here. Boom! Probably the best guy on defense for the Owls so far tonight. First and 10 at the 28. New Mexico driving. Initial series of the game right here. Initial drive of the game for the Lobos. And nothing doing on that play. Chris Shelton, a rare loss behind the line. Benford was there. And uh, Chris had no chance on that one. Amazing that Chris Shelton has only been dropped for a loss on five different not, five different plays in his career. Averaging just under seven yards a carry and had that big 56-yard touchdown reception. So Sellers scrambled, so that was not a pass play. It was called a pass play, but he didn't, he didn't throw. So the Lobo is still yet to put the ball in the air. Loss of two, second and 12 at the 30. Two tight ends in. Lennox Gordon goes in motion. Sellers gets rid of it for the first time and looking for Roy White and overthrew him. Good coverage by Warwick Franklin. And I think Sellers was off the mark anyway and had the chance of being intercepted. Well, Sellers is pointing downfield as he looks to the sideline. I think somebody didn't run the right route that time. I don't know if that was originally thrown for Roy White. Maybe he, he lost a little bit of footing down there. Boy, I tell you what, if that's going to be what kind of passing we're going to see from the Lobos tonight, no wonder they're keeping the ball on the ground as much as they are. Well, I think it's definitely uh, difficult conditions to be throwing the ball downfield too much. Here's an obvious passing situation. We'll see if they do that. 12 at the 30. Good hands by Sellers. Blitz coming. Has Jordan, but that will be short of the first down. 
Rashad Reynolds, the linebacker, came over to cover Gordon out of the backfield, and now we have another fourth down situation for New Mexico, but this time it's fourth and six, not fourth and one. Well, I think this time you gotta, you gotta try the field goal, I would expect. Mark the ball at the 23, and I think that's where we're gonna see a field goal attempt right. here for New Mexico. Here comes Colby Kaysen on to try to put one through. You worry about the footing for the kickers here tonight, especially the, uh, the the field goal kickers who need that hard step and drive. Kick is on its way, not much distance, but it goes through anyway. Nice job by Colby Kaysen to boot this one through, and New Mexico gets on the scoreboard first. 3 0 New Mexico, 8 15 to go, first quarter of play. We'll be back with more Lobo football from Rice Stadium after this. That was a good stat on, uh, on Lennox Gordon. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. His best was 37. I think it might have it on his neck. Let's see. I think I got it. 37 was his best. And welcome back. The New Mexico Lobos take the early lead on Rice, three nothing, at Rice Stadium. It was a career best for Colby Case in that 40-yard field goal. As the Lobos take the lead, Jason Bloom getting ready to kick off. Uh, traditionally, you don't return many against this guy. But waiting back deep, Michael Perry and Rod Newhouse for the Owls. It's more of a squib kick. And it will go out of bounds. So Rice will get good field position at the 35. Well, I didn't notice Bloom losing his footing on the kick, but that's very, very uncharacteristic for Jason Bloom. He's been very good at kickoffs. Most of them have gone in the end zone and not been returned. And he will go on the sidelines and talk to special team coach Chuck Muller. There's a look at the quarterback for the Rice Owls, Chad Nelson, and you can see uh, passing numbers not very good. 212 yards total. He's averaging about uh, five yards per pass and one passing TD with the three interceptions, but this is an offense that is not geared for a passer. 212 yards. Donald Sellers himself has eclipsed that mark in three different games this season. And you got you to keep in mind, that's a combined for the first four games this year for Rice. Rice runs the spread option. Similar to what Air Force uses and maybe closer to what Hawaii uses. Michael Perry on the misdirection. And he picks up about five or six. The Rice Owls have had to shuffle a little bit uh, in the offensive line. First the backs and receivers. Michael Perry is their leading ground uh, gainer this season. He's called an A-back. That's why the numbers are a little bit different there. Spencer George is the H-back. And Blackwell and Jones have not had a lot of opportunities to catch the ball for the Owls. Now, here's that offensive line, some shuffling because of an injury to center Jeremy Thigpen. So they've had to change some positions around uh, to shore that up since Thigpen was out, probably their best offensive line. They go to the fullback this time, right up the middle, Benji Wood. And he should have enough for the first down. Lobo defensive line goes like this. Carroll and Burton are the ends. They are rather light, but they are quite good. 
The linebackers, Lobos just go with two inside backers, Johnson and Irwin, leading tacklers on this team. And five defensive backs, Chili Davis, probably the best cover guy. He's on one quarter along with Ramos McDonald. And it'll be very tempting for those DBs, Andrew, to be going up quick to help out on the run, but you got to be careful of the pass. Yeah, no question. If they make a mistake here, Rice can really take advantage with some big offensive plays. And in motion up the middle to Benji Wood again, and he is swarmed on by the Blake Irwin is there, Daniel Johnson, along with Bill Borchers. Be up a second down in about eight. Borchers has done a wonderful job for the Lobos out in Dell City, Oklahoma. He's a sophomore. Comes in at 6'2", 249, and these guys are kind of light up front, but they've been doing the job. Look at Mark Parks, inside linebackers coach, and again, all of the players on the field have those wristbands. Uh, that's a system brought in by defensive coordinator Gary Patterson. The play will be made on the sidelines, and they'll check out exactly what they're supposed to do on the wristband. Up the middle. No, the quarterback keeps. That's Nelson. Foot race down the sidelines. McDonald is trying to bring him out of bounds and does it inside the 15. Chad Nelson, one of the best runs he's had this year. Perfect example of how that option can really catch the defense off guard. The entire local defense, as well as you and I, Mike, up here in the booth, were fooled on that play. It looked like the play was coming to the fullback up the middle. But Nelson takes it on the left side. Watch how many Lobo defenders bite there up the middle. And when he comes around the end, see if Marcus Stanton, number 23 here, has a good shot at Nelson right there. And he looks away and then shoves him. And he only saw the end of it. He shoved him, gave him an extra few yards there down the field. Ball is marked at the 18, so the Owls are in business. Perry, misdirection again. Stanton will bring him down, but not before he gets inside the 10-yard line. Well, again, this is assignment football. The Lobo defenders know exactly who they have. Someone's got the quarterback, someone's got the A-back, someone has the fullback. It's a really assignment-oriented defensive scheme here, and if someone misses an assignment, it really could blow for a big play. I would imagine it's going to take the Lobos a series or two defensively to get the hang of it. Yeah, this is really going to frustrate the defense tonight. They're used to playing a certain style throughout the first four games this season, and this is going to change it up quite a bit tonight. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. Spencer George, the H-back, goes in motion. And Perry, this time he's nailed by Blake Earl, who just waited for him to come. We're in the exact same play on consecutive plays there, and that time the Lobos didn't bite. Lobo defense has played pretty well so far this season in the red zone. Rice's kicker, not that impressive, only has a 24-yard field goal this season. The Lobos would love nothing more than to stop Rice here and force them to kick up the field goal attempt. There's a first down for Rice. Thad Bridges, the lone wide receiver, top of your screen. Benji Wood is the fullback. Option, the pitch is to George, wide open, and he'll get into the corner, touchdown Rice. Well, the first offensive series went almost exactly how head coach Dennis Franchoni scripted. It took a lot of time off the clock, resulted in a field goal. They got the first points on the board, but this defensive sequence here had many breakdowns and many missed assignments. And as you said, Mike, wide open, George was after the pitch. Only Chili Davis was there, but blocked well downfield by wide receivers. And I'll tell you what, pretty tough to defend after that. Got to give Rice a lot of credit. They uh, were crisp off the ball on this drive. Nice fakes. The uh, extra point on its way. It's good through the smoke and the haze here after the, uh, the cannon was set off. But Rice with the touchdown on their first drive, and they take the 7-3 lead. We'll see if the Lobos can respond after this quick timeout. Thank you.
you find out how many yards the Lennox board has already? Okay, thank you. Okay. Defense? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's horrible. Impressive Rice drive, first possession, 7-3 after the 65-yard drive, seven plays, and the Owls look very good. The Lobo defense, I'm sure on the sidelines right now, Gary Patterson is not only, you know, trying to get them focused, but going over some X's and O's because obviously, you know, th this is a little bit different than what New Mexico's used to seeing. Yeah, Rice made that look awfully easy against this Lobo defense, and I'm sure that the Lobos were making proper adjustments now to make sure that doesn't happen again. Scott Grimes getting ready to kick off. The wind uh, perhaps has died down a little bit because the ball stays on the tee. This is a bit of a squibber as well, and it will shoot right by Larry Brown, so the Lobos will take over at the 20-yard line. Well, with each team scoring on its opening drive, you'd think, wow, maybe we're in for a high-scoring affair tonight. I still don't think that's the case. I think this is still going to be a relatively low-scoring game. Keep in mind that Rice is averaging only 13 points a game coming into this one. Granted, they played some pretty tough competition in Ohio State, Kansas State, Air Force last week. But I'll tell you what, this Rice squad is not capable of putting up the huge numbers unless the Lobo defense really has trouble picking up this option. Well, the Lobo defense has been extremely impressive this year, and uh, I, I think this may be uh, you know, a little cold water thrown on them, but not the rain necessarily, but uh, the Rice Owls definitely gave them a wake-up call here. Lennox Gordon hit before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Coming into this drive, Gordon was eight carries, 37 yards. Now make that nine carries for about 35 yards after the loss. I think... I think the Lobos are going to need to put the ball in the air at some point here. They've only had one attempt so far, and Sellers threw incomplete. This time, Gordon up the middle. It's not necessarily bad if he doesn't have a gain on that one. It's what the Lobos can do on the play after. Sometimes that helps set up the next play, especially if they play action here. Pretty good spot, I think, for New Mexico. It's a gain of uh, nothing back to the line of scrimmage. Gordon goes in motion. Quarterback draw. Rice was waiting for it, but they're still having trouble bringing down Sellers. It'll be a gain of five. Reynolds, the linebacker, brings him down. Donald Sellers, a very talented runner last week. As you see there, rushed for 85 yards and a touchdown against TCU in the victory. This is obviously a called quarterback draw. Waited just long enough. Maybe could even wait a split second longer to try to draw that defense into thinking it was a passing play. Another big third down here for New Mexico. Third and fourth to 26. Lobos down 7-3. Still first quarter, 3.53 and counting to go. Option to the right. Sellers with the pitch. And Gordon barrels forward, runs right into Bedford. And I think he got the first down. Yeah, I think he did too by at least a yard. And that's a nice job by Gordon getting around the end and using sheer power to get that first down. Similar to the Lobos first first down on that first drive. Gordon out of Gilbert, Arizona, just 18 years old, the sophomore. And outstanding numbers for him. Again, those three 100-yard 100, 100 rushing games already in his career. Ball at the 31, first and 10 from there. Look at this formation. Yeah. Larry Brown, the wide receiver, way at the bottom of your screen. Can't see him right now, as a matter of fact. And we'll go two tight end set. Option right, running out of room, dives forward for maybe two yards. And again, it's Bedford over there on that far side. There's there's a Carlin Bedford who is a, a cornerback, and there's Thomas Bedford who is a linebacker. 
And uh, we've called both of their names quite a bit so far in the first quarter. Surprised how much the Lobos are running the option here so early in this game. I mentioned Rice runs the option, so their defense sees it every day in practice, knows how to defend it. I really believe the Lobos need to throw the ball some. And you can't expect to run the ball effectively on every play without passing the ball. And I, I think they really need to put the ball in the air. That's what Rice tries to do. <laughs> they try to run the ball, and, and so far this year it has not worked that well. Here's the draw, the little bit of a delay. Gordon tries to find some room outside, and he does, and again, he'll have enough for the first down. Well, Coach Fran would respond, heck, we can continue to run the ball like this. We don't need to throw the ball. Lennox Gordon does that almost all on his own, getting the first down. Ladofius McCalla made the tackle. And there's a look at him. From now on tonight, he is McCalla. First, Shelton made a nice block to help create, and then Gordon just outruns a couple of members of that Rice defense to get the first down. Rice is rather young on both sides of the ball. There's a lot of uh, inexperience. We'll take a look at Lennox Gordon. That, that turf is extremely hard out there. We tried to, you saw him there shaking off that elbow. Here's Sellers, the pitch. This time it's Reginald Johnson. They call him Rocket, and that's why bursting through down inside the 40-yard line of the Rice Owl. So Reginald Johnson, just a freshman. I'll tell you what, he has been a big sigh of relief for this Lobo squad, especially since Dion Marion has had that knee injury. They need someone to back up Gordon. You can see a bit winded on the sideline. Johnson comes in. Nice blocking by Shelton to help create that one, and then Johnson just takes off. Boy, he's been a huge bonus for this Lobo offense. Johnson from Lindale, Texas, 200-meter state champion in high school, third in the 100 meters. He can fly. Ball at the 36. Sellers taking his time on the play calling. Option left. Oh, how did he get through there? Still free to the 20. And he's taken down at about the 15-yard line. A couple of Rice Howells had to catch him from behind, including Terrence Melton, one of the linebackers. What a great run by Donald Sellers. Had a nice hesitation to help freeze a couple of the Owls on defense. Watch and see what I mean here as he comes to his left. And he'll hesitate there just long enough to let the guys get by in front of him and then takes off for a huge gain. And look at him. Tell me it looks like a quarterback right there. That's a running back if I ever saw one. Donald Sellers really can run the ball effectively. Coach Fran says uh, Sellers is the fastest quarterback he's ever coached. Coach Fran doesn't like those guys who run five flat or so in the 40. He likes the Sellers at 4-6 or so. Cool. Knox Gordon has some room inside the 10. Pushed out there by Bedford. And uh, I know you want to see the pass a little bit, but that offensive line is doing such a great job chewing up the yards on the ground. No, now I don't need to see it. I mean, <laughs> if they're going to run the ball like they have been in the last couple of plays, I don't need to. I just think at some point in the game, they're going to need to put the ball in the air. But right now, the run has been effective. The Lobos really need a touchdown on this drive to recapture the lead. They're not going to be happy settling for a field goal again. Lennox Gordon. Oh, that's a face mask oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, they missed one right there. That should have been a face mask call. And they did get it. Did they catch it? I believe they did. Finally, the officials called the face mask at the end of that play. That was a late flag on that one. But at least they made the correct call. And let's listen in and uh, get the official word. Face mask, number 44, defense, five-yard penalty, half the yard, half the, half the distance from the goal line, first down. I'm not so sure if that should have been a five-yard penalty, but uh, I guess when you're this close, probably wouldn't have made much of a difference yard here or there. And it will be first and goal for New Mexico. Ball spotted just inside the five. 124 to go, first quarter. Maybe a little play action here. Throw the defense off. Someone could be wide open in the end zone. Not a lot of room for the defense to cover the Lobos. We'll see on first down if they try to do that here. Just playing a little guessing game. Well, I'd be surprised, but let's... <laughs> and probably Rice would be surprised, too. Let's see. Two tight ends in now. Tommy Hemphill along with Roy White. And there is some confusion out there. One of the officials was looking at the Lobo coaching staff on the sidelines. I think they're trying to explain something. Dennis Franchoni not happy with something. Now talking to Jimmy McGrew on the sideline. Let's see if the Lobos change the play, and they do as McGrew comes into the game. I think the Lobos, because of that delay, now are changing their offensive call. Jeff Hotling comes out. But with McGrew in the lineup, they do like to start him quite often in the backfield, and that's what they'll do. 
full house backfield now. He likely will go in motion. To his right, no doubt. And they're still waiting for the officials to mark the ball, spot it ready for play. Now, usually a running play here is to go to his right and help create some holes there for someone in the backfield. There he goes, coming back to the left now. Option, Sellers keeps, uh, nothing doing there. Good defense by the inside people for the Rice Owls, including number three, that's Stanley. Well, that was a play where Sellers should have pitched because Gordon had McGrew in front of him and did have some room. That may have just been a design call with Sellers not having that choice. But it looked like if he had chose to pitch to Gordon, he would have had more room. And Jeff Hotling returns. Jimmy McGrew will leave. Hotling brings the play in now from the sidelines. Maybe that play was a, a setup play for this one. Let's let's see what the Lobos do. There's Ken Hatfield. I know many of you WAC fans are familiar with him, the former Air Force coach. Motion right. Now the pitch. It's a foot race. Gordon brought down at the one. And I, I bet my feeling is if it would have been a, a dry turf, Gordon would have got in because he had to kind of hesitate on his cut, and I think he might have been able to sneak in. Well, let's see here if he loses his footing at all. This looks like the same play as they just ran the other way, but this time Sellers, oh, and Sellers got hit hard, too, after he pitched it to Gordon. Gordon made a nice move. Now, I just, I don't think the weather's really played much of a okay. factor yet, Mike, but Lennox Gordon with a great effort there as it took three owls to drag him down. What a big play here on third and goal. Winding down, first quarter of play. Again, it is third down. No, they're listing it as first down here. Let's see. Inside, touchdown, New Mexico. That's Gordon going over the top. Didn't matter what down it was, <laughs> Gordon scores. All that matters is that Gordon came down in the end zone. It must have been after that face mask call a few plays ago, Mike. Uh, still first down, and instead it was first and, and five instead of first and goal. And the Lobos got on that last Gordon run. But here you'll see Gordon go over the top. He did this similar play earlier to get a big first down on a fourth down play. And now goes in almost untouched. Lost the ball when he got in the end zone, but all you have to do is have possession when he crossed that plane for the end zone. Colby Kaysen tries to add the extra point on its way, and it is good. So the Lobos regain the lead with 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's New Mexico 10 and Rice 7. And, Andrew, you can't get a much better drive than that. Well, they're 2 for 2, scoring on their first two drives of the game. First one, the field goal by Kaysen. That one, the touchdown. Real important that they scored the touchdown there. I think Rice would have gained some momentum defensively to stop New Mexico on their first two series. Now the defense needs to come out and, and put a big stand out there. They really looked bad in that first series by Rice. This option really threw them off of it. The well, Lobos have an off week next Saturday. Then they'll host San Diego State, and then we'll be back with our next Q13 Lobo telecast from Dallas, Texas, the Cotton Bowl. The Lobos will meet the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University October 26th. Should be a great matchup. SMU now in the Western Athletic Conference. Lobo Central starts at 5.30, kickoff at 6 for the Lobos against the Mustangs right here, only here on Q13, New Mexico sports leader. Lobos have already rushed for 126 yards so far tonight. Tenth best in the nation, rushing for 259 yards a game. This offense really has been potent on the ground, but I do think at some point tonight they're going to need to put the ball in the air a couple of times. Let's look at Michael Perry back deep for the Rice Owls. Let's see if Jason Bloom can uh, boot this one a little better than the first time. On its way. Well, picked up at the 15 yard line by Gingrich. Mike Gingrich brings it out to about the 31 before he's gang tackled there. If it's the short kickoff by strategy, I don't get it. If he's losing his footing, I'm not seeing it. I don't quite understand why Jason Bloom isn't booming it through the end zone like we're so accustomed to seeing him do. Well, I think it is uh, difficult for him. I think he's a little bit unsure of himself out there. And that may be the reason. The previous scoring drive. Look at that 11 plays, 80 yards, just under five minutes. That's perfect. A lot of plays, a lot of time off the clock. Lobo's two first series have combined for almost a full quarter, just under 12 minutes for the first two series combined for the Lobos. Well, last time, Rice had the ball, their only previous time. They drove it the length of the field from the 35 and scored the touchdown. Again, a misdirection. That's Spencer George into the secondary for New Mexico. Terrence Burton makes the tackle. And Rice is in business, and that first down is so important for Rice to, to gain far five or six yards. 
We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more from Rice University. I did Uh, no, they did a class play, but it was no good. Oh, that short little one. Yeah, they did have a little swing pass. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just throw some. Is that right? Okay, thanks. Yeah, let's do it. Sure, why not? I like that stuff. That's good. Let's do some black hole. Thanks, good job. Appreciate it. Getting ready to start the second quarter now. New Mexico on top of Rice by a 10-7 count. And there's always action away from the field. Jason Blackwell uh, meet Ramos McDonald. <laughs> As you mentioned, away from the ball there, Ramos McDonald getting a nice little shove in a Blackwell's face. Nelson on the pitch for the Rice Owls. And Perry brings it out past the 40-yard line. It'll be very close to the first down. Looked like he got a good spot there. So far, Rice has not been stopped by New Mexico. No, they haven't. Now, defensive coordinator Gary Patterson's familiar with the option. He comes from Navy, where they, that's what they run offensively. So he's seen it many times before. This Lobo defense only gets to see it once or twice a year, depending on who's on their schedule. And that was certainly a strength, and Dennis Franchoni would admit this, of Fred Blyle, the former defensive coordinator, was stopping the option. They sat down, Dennis Franchoni did with Gary Patterson earlier in the week, try to find the weaknesses the defense had. Let's see if they can correct those, because Rice has had really not many problems running this option so far. Chad Nelson has been perfect at quarterback, making the right decisions. He'll keep it himself. Scott McGarahan forced the action, and uh, Nelson gains about three on that play. Antoine Wright, the linebacker slash defensive back, comes over to help out. Well, Antoine Wright splits that splits playing time at that strong safety spot with Marcus Stanton. Wright is a better defender against the run, Stanton against the pass. A game like we're going to see here tonight. If that's the case, then I don't expect to see Stanton play an awful lot because obviously uh, Rice is going to keep the ball on the ground as much as they can. Yeah, Wright is, is one of those guys with the body that's in between a linebacker and a safety. And he's trying to find the right position. We've only seen six yards passing for the two teams combined, and now we're in the second quarter. Second and six at the 45. Perry. To the 40. Here comes right behind him, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 20. The Rice Owls continue to move the football on the ground. Right again with the tackle. Terrence Burton tried to help out, and it was McDonald as well. Well, once he busts through the defensive line, the linebackers need to step up, and safety's due to miss the tackle. Let's see if we can pick up here on the replay who missed the tackle. There's Perry coming through. Nice block. Oh, man. Great block on Borchers. And there's Perry slipping through. And right there, a Lobo miss a tackle. I think that was Billy Austin, number 16. 
And that's what we talk about, assignment football. If you miss your assignment, it's going to lead to a huge play for Rice. Spencer George, number 24, put the hit on the Lobo linebacker and started the play. Here's the first pass for Rice. It's complete inside the 10. The Rice Owls surprised New Mexico. Wilmington with the reception. That's only the sixth catch of the season for Darius Wilmington. Lobo coaches are beside themselves on the sideline. Everything that Rice wants to do, they're able to do so far. They put in the air for the first time. And an easy completion. Julie Davis way off his man. Watch Wilmington here. Just a nice route, nice crisp route, and a nice pass actually there by Nelson, who yeah. doesn't put the ball in the air much, but when he does, it looks pretty sharp. Well, so far this season, completing about 47% of his passes. Just hasn't thrown that many. 42 coming in. Back to Perry. A little bit of a counterplay. Bad tackle by New Mexico, and Perry scores. Well, a couple missed tackles that time by the Lobo defense. I think Shuley Davis was the first guy to meet him and missed him. Boy, this isn't good news for the Lobos so far. Rice is really moving the ball with these. Two offensive series, two touchdowns for Rice University. Dennis Franchoni on the sidelines. Oh, he's irate. Yeah. Here comes Mike Ruff now to try to make it 14 points for the Rice Owls. And he does. So, so far, no answers defensively for New Mexico. We'll see if the Lobo offense can answer again when we come back. for two. Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure. So you see number one, baby. Well, each team has scored each time they've had the ball. Rice now leads it 14 to 10. Here's the touchdown run by Michael Perry. Well, the Lobos miss a couple of tackles. Billy Austin in right there, misses them. Then Chili Davis. Oh, that's a bad job of tackling by the Lobo defense. When the coaches get a hand of that film and the players are watching, I wouldn't want to be in that room. Perry has had a couple of 100-yard days during his career, last year against Texas and last week against Air Force. Very uncharacteristic of the Lobo defense this year to miss tackles. Last year it was too common for Lobo coaches to admit, but this year, regardless of what type of offense anyone's running, the Lobos for the most part have been a good tackling team. Scott Grimes again getting ready to pooch it away. The Lobos have had two opportunities so far in this game and, and have not returned uh, any of those. Makes that three now. This one should be returnable. Jamie Oliver with it. His first return as a Lobo. Nicely done. Out to the 38-yard line. And the Lobos will take over from there. Greg Holleran on special teams to make the tackle. The Lobos very happy with their field position here. Well, reminiscent of a guy last year named Oliver who used to return kickoffs with ease. Winslow Oliver, of course, now with the Carolina Panthers. I was going to ask whatever happened. Yeah, whatever happened to that guy. Still doing a pretty good job returning kicks, but now at the next level. Lobo offense has scored in its first two offensive series. The Rice offense has scored. The difference is the Lobos had to settle for a field goal on their first drive. This could be one of the quickest games in Lobo history. <laughs> Both teams keep it on the ground. We've only seen two passing attempts so far. Or excuse me, three. Two by the Lobos, one for Rice. 
and two of them were completed, and the clock kept running. They were paid by the hour. <laughs> Slow things down, guys. Knox Gordon, another carry. Pretty good surge at the end by that offensive line. Starting this drive, the Lobos have had 22 rushes for 131 yards. Most of those, Lennox Gordon. And now well over 60 yards already here in the second quarter. First quarter, Lennox Gordon, 14 carries, 59 yards rushing. Donald Sellers had 45 yards rushing. So they've done a nice job on the ground. The only problem was that first series, they weren't able to punch it in the end zone. Shelton is the fullback, has not seen that much action here tonight. Again, he's bothered by a bad ankle. There's a little bit of a delay to Gordon again, and I think he may have lost a foot or two into Quay Kalu with the tackle. The all-time leading sack man for the Rice Owls. Into Quay Kalu came into this season with 15 sacks. He had eight back in 94, seven last year. Doesn't have a sack yet here, though, in 1996. In fact, the Rice defense overall only has three but he leads all Rice players with 15. That may be a little misleading because when you play Air Force, you won't have many opportunities for a sack, and I don't think Ohio State threw the ball much when they met the first game of the season. But you're right, he has not gotten to the quarterback yet. Third down and seven. Sellers with the fake, he'll try to throw it. Has to scramble, he's got some room. That'll be a first down and more, and there you get a look. The first time it's been obvious about the wet turf. Yeah, no question he slipped at the end. Good thing he's not hurt, though. Now, he comes into this game with a bad ankle. He is furious, yelling at a couple of his wide receivers, not getting open on that play. Donald Sellers happy with the gain he had, but not happy with the result of the breakdown by the receiving core. No one's open right there, and he realizes, wow, that whole side of the field wide open. Gordon throws a nice block right there. And now it's Sellers one-on-one, -on -one. he does slip. But he comes up pretty furious with a couple of routes that his receivers ran on that play. There's a first down again at the 41. Two tight ends, two receivers at the top. They'll fake the running back, taking time. Here comes Sellers again. Nobody's open. He'll keep it. And again, he's hit as he goes out of bounds at about the 27. Thomas Benford, the linebacker, came over. But it's, it's almost like it's in slow motion out there. The receivers are really having a hard time cutting. You know, that's exactly what I was going to say, Mike. It really does look like the receivers downfield are in slow motion. They're just not getting open. you got to have crisp, clean cuts, and they're not getting it. And Sellers is asked to do it all on his own. And Sellers comes in with a tender ankle. That's a good look at Donald. Now, you talked to him before the game. And, uh, he said it was, it was bothering him more than he would ever admit to the coaches. Uh, but he's got the bye week next week. He just hopes he can get through today okay, and he feels two weeks rest, and he'll be fine for that San Diego State game. He's got to make it through today first, though. Ken Hatfield, the rice coach, uh, working the officials on the sidelines. Sellers will keep that one. Uh, not a lot of room there. Judd Smith from Plano, Texas, just a freshman with the stop. Let me elaborate on why I think the Lobos need to pass the ball some tonight to be successful because Sellers just can't be asked to carry the ball as much as he has been. Uh, up, up here, we're early in the second quarter. It's amazing how many times he's been hit already tonight. They need to get other people the ball. So far, it's been Gordon and Sellers, and that's it. And they need to get some other guys into the action. Donald uh, bending over there momentarily, trying to catch his breath. Is second and seven. Burke Martin, we haven't seen a lot of today. Goes wide out, bottom of your screen. Two tight ends set. Shelton, the fullback. Rice coming on the blitz. Sellers brought down after another short gain. Bedford again with the tackle. I'm really surprised how often they're running the option so far tonight. So far, they've had a couple of big plays with it. But for the most part, the Rice defense, as we mentioned, of course, during practice, they get a lot of time seeing the option. They know what to do. Their assignments are certainly very clear. Now on third and six, this is one of those weird positions here in terms of is it passing play or running play. It's been an interesting call here by Fran and Darnell. Maybe they're thinking uh, they're in uh, four down territory. And the shotgun here. Hear the crowd in the background, and now Donald Sellers calls the timeout with the play clock starting to tick down. 10-19 to go. 
First half of play, Rice leads New Mexico 14-10. We'll take a timeout and we'll see how this drive finishes up for the Lobos. Be right back. I think what we'll see here on this play, I think we'll see a pass to the. Uh, I bet we'll see a pass to a, a, a back coming out of the backfield, something safe. This is updated. Good. Cool, Thank you. Third Eighty yards, leading rusher. Wow. Big third down play by the Lobos, trailing it 14 to 10. Mike Powers and Andrew Paul live from Houston, Texas. Third down and about five and a half. Now before the timeout, the Lobos were in a shotgun set, so they changed the play call during that timeout. Lennox Gordon is the setback. Option left. Sellers keeps, dives forward, well short of the first down. And that will bring up fourth down. Benford again there. And let's see, I'm imagining the field goal team will come on, and that's exactly what we're going to see here. Donald Sellers after the two-yard gain now has 82 yards rushing so far in the evening. That's unbelievable, as we're here still early in the second quarter. He now has 470 yards rushing on the season, Mike. All of last year, he rushed for 494. So he's almost eclipsed that mark in an 11-game season of a year ago. Colby Kaysen, it's set down by Graham Lee at the 28 on its way, and it's good. So that's a 38-yard field goal, and Kaysen boots up back-to-back field goals for the New Mexico Lobos, and, and he's on a little roll right yeah, now. Good thing they took him on the trip, huh? <laughs> a 40-yarder and a 38-yarder. His career high coming into tonight's game was 37, so he's already surpassed that twice. And the Lobos now within one. The good news is that they've scored on each of their first three drives. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. The defense now needs to come out and show that they can stop this Rice offensive attack. The option has fooled them every which way. Even one pass caught them by surprise. The defense really hasn't shown much so far, so far that they can uh, thwart this uh, owl attack. I mean, the option's really killing them. Well, I still think that uh, once they get used to it, they're going to be just fine, and we'll see if that plays out. About tonight at 10, get today's news from Teresa Rodriguez and Jason Feinberg. Alan Scott will have tomorrow's forecast. Hope it's a dry one. Our man Van Tate will bring you up to date on all the action in today's sports world. I know it's a busy Saturday as usual. Today's news from the Q13 news team tonight at 10 here on Q13. All right, Bloom, kick one through finally, huh? Booted deep to Michael Perry at the five. To the 20. And he's blocked down there. Good coverage by the cover team for New Mexico. We'll give Jeff Hotling some of the credit there. Well, that was his best kickoff so far. The first two really did were not Jason Bloom type kickoffs. That one gave the special teams a chance to bury him deep. Let's give Brian Erlacher credit too for that tackle on that last play. He's the Lovington freshman and the coaches just love what he brings to the table and they're very excited about his future played real well future linebacker for the Lobos when he established himself in that defense all right I haven't been too successful predicting play so far I'm going to call for an option here on first down just just watch, a guess. watch the drop back just a guess Up, up the middle to the fullback Benji Wood nice search there he lost it and I think they're going to say he was down I believe that's the right call, and that is what they make. No, I think Rice recovered it. I, I, I think it actually was a fumble. Let's see here if they called it a fumble or not. Wood comes through. Does he lose the ball before he hits the ground? 
No, I think the turf caused the fumble. Right. Because the owl did jump on it after it was loose. So one way or the other, the owls would have gotten it back. Well, it's second and three now. New Mexico has recovered just three fumbles this year. 11 turnovers total caused by this red heat defense. Eight interceptions. And up the middle to the fullback. That's Benji Wood again. And that's a first down. Benji Wood was the starting fullback for the Owls in the first game of the season against Ohio State. Suffered a shoulder injury and hadn't played since until a little bit last week against Air Force. And now has resumed his spot there as the starting fullback. Talented runner. Comes through. And it takes a few Lobos to bring him down. Nice first down game. Lobo defense needs to step it up. Boy, I think they're a bit confused now. This triple option's really throwing some different things at them. Go from the wishbone right now. Another look. Let's look to blitz. And almost get to Perry in the backfield. And still on his feet. And finally brought down by McDonald, but not before he gets past the first down marker at midfield. That was a great call by the Lobos on defense, but Daniel Johnson was not able to make the tackle. Absolutely. Johnson was the first one there. He got a hand on him. Mike, I wonder if it's not just the field that's slippery, but maybe the players' uniforms a bit, because Johnson just slides right off him. And Perry makes a nice run, breaks a couple of tackles. You see McGarrahan and others come through, and finally driven down after he crosses midfield. Perry rushed for over 100 yards last week against Air Force and has really been the most explosive back so far this season for the Rice Owls. First and 10 again, Rice. Great drop back. Blitzing from the back side, and it's nearly intercepted that time by Jason Purvis. Bill Borchers came running in and hit the quarterback smack dab in the back. Well, Jason Purvis doesn't see a lot of playing time. He's a backup for Barrett Garrison. That one caught him a bit by surprise, hit him right in the numbers. You see, just a freshman, almost had a chance to make the biggest play of his young career. But it was really Bill Borchers, number 98, that forced this to happen. Borchers comes in and hits him as he lets it go, and Purvis just jumped too soon. Got a little excited. <laughs> oh. He would have been a lot more excited if he would have been able to help hang on to that one. So he was already thinking about Blake Irwin's touchdown against BYU. Yeah. How good that looked on TV. Jason will get his chance before he's through. Well, never nervous Purvis. Going to have to do something better next time. That's George barreling through again. It doesn't matter if it's George, Wood, or Perry so far in the first half. Benji Wood out of, an, out of Atlanta. He's a junior. Now Fat Bridges, the wide out, brings in the play to Chad Nelson. Well, to a certain extent, we didn't know, and I imagine the Lobo coaches also didn't know exactly what to expect from Rice tonight, considering their competition so far this season. Playing Ohio State and Kansas State and the like, it's real hard to tell exactly how good this Rice team is. Third and two. A hole on the left side. And breaking free is Gordon. Kalon Gordon gets his first carry, and that's a first down. Lobos weren't looking for that young man. No, exactly. They weren't. And Nelson, whatever decision he seems to make, seems to be the correct one. You have dive. You have quarterback option. You have the handoff. George comes through. There's Billy Austin. Hey, if Billy Austin's missed three or four here. I, so I really wonder the if the jerseys are a bit slippery with the rain and Lobos aren't able to get a good grip because I haven't seen the Lobos tackle this poorly all season long. First downs at just about even. Surprise, actually, the Lobos have more. Quarterback keep. Nelson. Pass for 30. Driven down by New Mexico's Bill Borchers, the inside lineman, the interior lineman. I think the only reason the Lobos have more first downs is because they've had more chances. They have they had the ball one extra time starting the game with the ball. And now Nelson, very good running quarterback. Another missed tackle by the Lobo defense. Gets a nice first down gain. Makes it second and real short here. I think that's the, been the key. You know, that last third down and two, we haven't seen very many of those. For Rice, they've been able to get second and three or whatever. They yeah, you're just absolutely right. Had. Absolutely right. Coach Fran talked about it early, earlier in the week that this game will be won and lost on first downs. And Rice really has had big gains on first downs so far. Good surge by Daniel Johnson, but he's unable to wrap up Wood, and Wood gets through for the first down. 
Well, that's one of the few true blitzes we've seen so far from the Lobo defense. But he only needed a little over a yard or so to get the first down. It's a nice defensive play, but got enough to bring up another first down here for the Owls. And now we'll have a timeout, an official's timeout, let's see. As they uh, finally move the chains, I guess the, uh, uh, the, the linesman down there, the crew did not get the word that it was a first down. So they move, and now they're ready to play. 5.45 and counting. Live from Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. Second meeting ever between these two schools. Interesting, you see Benji Wood, 63 yards rushing so far. That's the amount of yards he had rushing on the season coming into this game. That shoulder uh, shoulder injury, of course, hurt his Up the middle, that's Wood again. Inside the 15, brought down by McDonald. But not before they get another first down, I do believe. Yes, in fact, that's what it is. Well, not even BYU's offense had such success against this Lobo defense. I mean, this is really, I think, the worst we've seen the Lobo defense so far. And you got to give a lot of credit to Rice offense. They're running the option extremely well. And it's got the Lobo defense on its heels rather than on its toes. It's been a very aggressive Lobo defense so far this season. But now they're playing very defensive instead of an offensive style of defense. George inside the five, brought down there. Chad Smith got an ankle. And... Rice stays in business. Let's get another look at it. Well, Daniel Johnson was there, picked up by a blocker. Nice block by Perry, actually, on that play to keep Johnson out of it. And just creates holes. That's what this offense designed to do, and Rice is almost running it to perfection so far tonight. They're two for two on their first two series, two touchdowns, and they're awfully close here to making it three for three. And during the... Uh bit of a delay there. Chad Nelson came over and talked to Ken Hatfield. Still have lots of time on the play clock down to 14 and 13. And it's second down and four. Ball at the six. Nelson keeps. Sliding through and score. It's as simple as this. If you can't tackle them, you can't stop them. I mean, they just keep going right through the Lobos, literally. Right through them. Unbelievable how many missed tackles we're seeing so far. And Rice has scored touchdowns on each of its first three possessions so far tonight. Dennis Franchoni wiping off his glasses because he just can't believe what he's seen so far tonight. Maybe he needs a new prescription because he certainly doesn't like the one he's got right now. Well, he tipped over a table at halftime of the TCU game and... If there's a table inside the locker room here, I would say watch out. I think some coaches need to get in there quickly and try to remove anything with uh, sharp edges. Well, Rice goes up by eight again. 21-13 our score. 4-12 to go in the half. We'll be back with more after this. Rice has now taken a 21-13 lead over New Mexico in WAC football here on Q13. Another long scoring drive results in the third touchdown of the first half for the Owls. 
And there's a look at it. Chad Nelson taking the pigskin the last six yards for that touchdown. Well, each team has had the ball now three times. You figure, okay, so what are we, late in the first quarter? No, we're almost at halftime. 4-12 to go here in the second quarter. Rice has already ran the ball for 174 yards tonight against this Lobo defense. It is not going to be a pleasant locker room at halftime if you're a member of that Lobo defense. Kick on its way. And this one will be called in by Larry Brown at the 12. Trying to find the wall. Gets up into it to the 30. Using that speed to bring it out to the 41. Well done by Larry Brown. Kevin Masick. The linebacker brought him down for the Rice Owls. Terrific kick return there by Brown. The previous one, Jamie Oliver had a real nice return too. Gives the Lobo some great field position. They have just over four minutes to work with here. Left in the first half to try to put it back in the end zone again. Mike, this may be one of those games, and I, I would never have thought I'd say this tonight, that whoever has the ball last may win. It's unbelievable. Each team has had such success offensively so far. Lobos with just one pass completion in the game. Out of two attempts. Drive up the middle. Game of maybe one or so. Clock moves with less than uh, four minutes to go in the half. And we have not seen a punt in the ball game. Haven't seen a turnover. Haven't seen a punt. It's been scoring on each possession so far. The difference, of course, has been the Lobos one touchdown, two field goals, while Rice has had three touchdowns. And that's really been the difference for Lobos offensively. They moved the ball nicely. They've just won for three on trying to punch it in the end zone. Hard to complain with points, though, on every possession. Right. Second and eight. Yeah, the offense has looked good. Watch the end around. Fake the Burt Martin. <laughs> trying, to fake the, trying to get something going. Sellers stays on his feet and will come up a little bit short of the first down. But that's that great athletic ability that it brings to the table. I think Donald Sellers is going to have a chat now with Larry Brown. Brown was open, but he kept running away from Sellers. When Sellers is scrambling like that, he needs his receivers to help him out and come towards him to make it easier for him to throw. Brown was deep downfield, wide open, but again, way too far for Sellers to reach him, especially when he's on the run on wet turf like this. It's awfully tough for Sellers to get good mustard on the ball. Well, they tried to seal off the linebacker, but they couldn't do it. Because of it, Sellers had to run for his life there. Third down, we'll call it two at the 49. Well, the Owls fans hooting and hollering now. Delay up the middle, first down New Mexico. Good job by that offensive front, let's give them credit. Kevin Ned, Chris Wallace, Brandon Turner, Andy Gleason, and Shane Jager. Did you miss anybody else? I think that was I, it. I think that's all of them. I, the tight end we probably ought to give credit to. Let's see if it was Roy White in on that play that time or Tommy Hempel, but somebody did a good job. I think White's still out there on the field. I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of fans out here at Wright Stadium tonight. It holds 70,000. We have maybe 10% of that tonight, but they're making a lot of noise. These are the diehards that are here this evening sitting through the rain. Up to 46. Gordon in motion, flag flies, Sellers on the quarterback draw, hit hard, a loss of two, let's check out the flag, now a late flag came in, and I think the late one will go against Rice. Yeah, I think that'll be a celebration penalty against the Owls. The first one I think may have been illegal formation against New Mexico, but there has been a breakdown on every passing play so far it seems like for the Lobos. That was obviously a designed pass, but whoever was supposed to be open wasn't. Now watch Thomas Benford, the linebacker. He makes the tackle here. He's number 33. He's flying in. Nice tackle on Sellers. And gets a little too carried away afterward. And you'll see right here. Yippee! Yeah, you can't do that. A little too much. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you take that out of football, I don't think he was trying to show anyone up. Well, I think he did it right in the face of the official, too. So it may have just been the uh, location of it as much as what he did. Now the Owls defense complaining about the call. Still haven't, I don't believe, seen the officials call yet. The illegal block, number 32. Excuse me, number 32. There you defense, 15-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Now that was offense, obviously against Lennox Gordon. He was awfully confused on that one. 
Oh, well, I so was just confused too. I thought now, it was going against Rice. What was the second flag about that? Because there, there was clearly a second yeah. flag that came down much after the illegal block. I'm not so sure. There was a, a penalty right away, which was probably motion against the Lobos. Second one had to be Gordon coming in, but I didn't see it. So there must have been two penalties against New Mexico, and the Owls took the one that would move the Lobos back further. Wow, that's first and 25 now. Ball way back at the New Mexico 39 with 2.49 to go. So at least uh, you can feel a little better now. It wasn't a celebration penalty against the Owls. <laughs> Which it was. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the pass inside screen to Larry Brown, and that'll pick up only four before Winship meets him there. Jason Winship, senior from Houston. I hate that play. I mean, I really do. I just I hate the inside screen. I, I've never really seen it work for a big gain unless you're Joe Montana to Jerry Rice or Steve Young to Jerry Rice for that matter. It's just a tough play because you come over the middle of the field where most most of the defenders are, and usually they're going to meet you. New Mexico calls timeout. It has a has been a play that New Mexico has used successful, uh, successfully, at least during the Stony Case days. And uh, it has not worked that well the last couple of years, although the Lobo coaching staff does still believe, uh, they do believe in it. Now that was a timeout by Rice, which is interesting because there's 2.32 left in the quarter. With second and 21, they feel, hey, if they can stop the Lobos here before they get a first okay. down, gives them some time to score before the half. Well, Q13 wants to welcome you home to great entertainment this fall from CBS. Monday, great comedy and drama. Starting with Cosby at 7, then it's Pearl, Murphy, Brown, Sybil, and Chicago Hope at 9. It's going to be a great season of television right here on Q13, TV10, and Z6. Mike Powers and Andrew Paul with you. Glad you're watching tonight on Q13 around the state of New Mexico. TV10 in Roswell as well. We appreciate that. 2.32 to go, first half. Rice has scored touchdowns in each of its three possessions to lead it 21-13. The Lobos haven't had much success this season scoring quickly. I mean, the two-minute drill, something they worked on a lot yesterday in practice. We'll see if they can use it wisely here to score before the intermission. Straight drop from Sellers, a little swing out to Lennox Gordon. Has one block, gets down to about the 4-5, near the original line of scrimmage. Larry Thompson, all 5-9 of him comes over. The, one of the down linemen for Rice to make the tackle. Clock's running, got to move quickly here. The Lobo's taking an awful lot of time off the clock. Well, this is one of those areas where, well, do you hurry? And if you don't make the first down, you give Rice the ball back with lots of time left, or do you take your time? I think you got to hurry. I think you got to try to get the first down and give your offense as much time as possible to score. Third and ten. From the shotgun, Sellers. Gordon out of the backfield. Sellers looking downfield. He'll run for it, and he'll be very close to it. He'll be about a half a yard short, I believe. He had Larry Brown open over the middle of the field right around the first down marker, but Sellers thought he had a better chance to run for it than throw for it. You know, I think he was screened off by one of the linebackers who was in front of Brown, maybe five yards ahead of him, and Larry Brown did not move no, you're right. to clear out of the way to, to maybe get yourself open or for Sellers to see. Well, a lot of times you'll see receivers put their hands up in the air to try to make sure they get the attention of the quarterback. There's Bertrand Martin, number eight. He's also open on the play. So Martin was open. Also, Brown was open over the middle of the field. And that may be one area where Donald Sellers is open for some criticism, and that's finding that open receiver quick enough. They're going to measure here if it's the first. This is a big mark right here. The Lobos get it. This is a real good chance for them to try to score again before the half. Too many players along the sideline to see if there's a better angle. It looks like about yeah, maybe short. a foot or so. Sure. All right, what do you do? I, I, uh, I let the coaches make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to go for it. Yeah, I think they, let me tell you, they're going right. to go for it as we... Uh, let me tell you why that's the right call, because well, the clock shows 15 minutes and 30 seconds. It's obviously not at, right here. There's probably about a minute and a half left before halftime. Minute 53, there we go. Minute 53 before the half. If you miss it, you've got to show some confidence that your defense can stop a running attack in that much time. And you got to have some confidence in the offense. They made it on fourth and one earlier. This is the second time going on for it on fourth down today. Last time it was Gordon over the top. Let's see if they call the same play. Okay, let's take a look. 
They put a minute 53 on the clock. I thought it was a little less than that, but that's what they're going with. Fourth down, second time, fourth and short. Hotling in motion. Same play. It looks like they got it. He got it. No, he got it first. Now, this is a horrible mark. He got it. Rice settled down because I think he got it. No question about it. Rice was waiting for it, but it was uh, a little bit too late as Gordon went over the top. Yeah, all you have to do is have possession of the ball past the first down marker. And right there when he was first hit, he did. Otherwise, the defense would just pick him up and carry him back into his own end zone. And, you know, they'd be doing that all day. 143 in county. First down, keeps the drive alive. Option left, Sellers pulls up, has a man open. Burt Martin makes a great catch inside the five. What an outstanding catch for Burt Martin. Oh, what a terrific pass. Sellers threw behind him a little bit, and Martin knew, most important, catch the ball before you worry if you can get into the end zone. Great concentration from Bertrand Martin. Only has 10 catches now this season, but he's averaging more than 17 yards a catch. He's always been the big play guy for New Mexico this season. Nice play action fake and Sellers throws over the middle. And watch a little bit behind Martin here. He has to come back wow. and slip. Lost his footing. And obviously they're showing how the wet turf is affecting the play. 32 yard reception brings it down to about the two and a half yard line. Now the clock should not be a factor. 119 in count. Sellers, the pitch to Gordon. Good block by Shelton. Touchdown. Oh. Well, in basketball, in hockey, you get assists for a goal. Maybe in football, you should get an assist for a touchdown. Because Chris Shelton did as much as Lennox Gordon did for that one. What a tremendous block. Absolutely tremendous. He is a terrific blocker. He comes out, clears as much room as an offensive lineman would out there. And now, New Mexico will take a timeout while we look at the replay. See Chris Shelton, number 38, the fullback, leading the way for Lennox Gordon. By the way, nice job by Sellers. Waited as long as he possibly could. And then Shelton comes out and just drives the defender completely out of the play. And Gordon just waltzes in. McCalla had no chance. I mean, I would not want to see Chris Shelton coming in. Yeah. There's a reason why they nicknamed him Thumper. I think they called the timeout here, Mike, because they're down by two. And they're going to call a two-point conversion play here to try to tie this game up. We were talking during the last break if they would go for two if they scored again, being down by eight. Now they're down by two. I mean, it's a tough call this early in the game. Do you want to do that and possibly take a point off the board? We'll find out what coaches think. 21-19 our score. Rice leads it by two with 112 to go in the half. The good side of it now is that if you miss it, you've got plenty of time to recover from it. Whereas if you go for it in the third quarter, you don't have as much time. I, I figure at this point an extra point doesn't do you an awful lot of good. And I guess that's what the coaches are thinking. Might as well tie it up and go in and play the second half even. Don't forget, Air Force only led this Rice squad 14 to 10 at the half. So Rice has hung in there. It was the third quarter that was absolutely abysmal for him against Air Force and has been a big problem for him all year. That drive took three minutes, 59 yards, after the very good kickoff return by Larry Brown, and Lennox Gordon gets his second touchdown of the game. What really helped set that up, of course, was the big pass play from Sellers to Martin. You knew they had to pass the ball at some point tonight for this offense to really be effective. This is where the ball was a moment ago on the touchdown play. And now they'll use another timeout. Just trying to get a look at the alignment. Uh, my hunch is that Coach Franchoni said, look, if you don't like what you see or, or take a look at it, we'll discuss it. That was the last Lobo timeout of the half. Now you've got them. They don't carry over. Might as well use them. Make sure you have the right play call. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the first Lobo two-point conversion attempt of the season? You're, you have a better mind than I do. I think you're right. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I think, yes, it is. First try, first time attempting the two-point conversion this year. Well, since they've run the option so much tonight, I guess that would be a good guess here. That's what they scored the touchdown on. If I had a, if I had a hunch, I would say run the option or, or a play action because that certainly has been effective too. The lights of the city of Houston. May be uh, part of Rice University, the medical center over there. Not sure which way we'll point it. I think so. Mike, they believe you. Just tell them whatever. <laughs> Why don't I just say it's a big building? That's right, with lights on it. Now, when we got in yesterday, 
It uh, shortly after we got here, it started to rain, and uh, actually about the time uh, turned off the lights last night, it started to rain. And it rained overnight, and right now there are some umbrellas out here, but I think for the most part the rain has gone away, but the field has been uh, sopping wet. Here comes the two-point conversion. Clock will not run on the extra point. Option left. Sellers up the middle. Fights into the end zone. The two-point conversion is good. And we're tied up at 21 all. Well, they ran the option. Same play they scored the touchdown on. This time, Sellers kept it. And a nice job fighting through. And you can see he's limping badly there. Had a tender left ankle coming into this game. And limping badly there after the play. Nice run. Let's see if we can see what happens to his ankle on the play. He just been losing his footing a little bit as he dove in. Nice play by Sellers. Boy, we we may see some of Graham Lee, the backup quarterback, before this night is through. Well, I don't know. Not unless they need it, because Donald Sellers is the man for this team, and uh, he has a way of bouncing back for the Lobos. Did it against BYU last year. Uh, I think right now he's not even thinking about that ankle. But you're right. He's he's clearly clearly in pain, clearly limping. Now remember, Rice deferred after winning the toss. So they'll get the ball first to start the second half. So real important here for the Lobos. They stop Rice, only a minute 12 the Owls have to work with. You think with, a, with an option attack, that's not enough time to really drive the ball down the field. We'll see if the Owls choose to put it in the air. Jason Bloom's kick will be returned. No, it won't. Right over the head of Michael Perry, who I noticed during warm-ups has some trouble judging the ball a little bit and has a tendency to maybe catch it with his hands about the shoulders or up by the helmet. Well, see, if you're an outfielder in baseball and you misjudge that, that's going for extra bases. Fortunately for him in football, it just comes out to the 20-yard line. The wind is blowing. It's hard to tell right now. I think it's swirling a bit, and it's hard to say down on the field if the wind played a factor at all in that kickoff. Looks like it's blowing east to west. And uh, it has been, I do believe, a factor. And that may be a reason why New Mexico has not passed the ball as much as you thought coming in. Oh, which the wind blowing would have been to his left rather than behind him, over his head. Well, let's see what Rice decides to do. They'll go back. Quarterback draw. Terrence Burton is there. He gets by the Burton tackle and runs right into Blake Irwin. And uh, Chad Nelson has done a very nice job running this Rice attack. Yeah, he has. Rice still has two timeouts. They choose not to use one there. Under a minute to go. They have to work quickly. Nelson keeps it. A little bit of a fake, and he'll get out of bounds at the 40. He's hit there. Rice wants a flag. Kent Hatfield comes running over and runs into the official action. But no flag. And I think it's a good no call. There's Hatfield. Head coach for Rice. He wants a late hit call on the play. They're not going to get it. Let's see again. You make the call from home and see if you think the Lobos hit Nelson late here, if he's out of bounds or not. No, I think Austin hit him just as he, before he went out of bounds. I think that's a clean hit and a good call by the official. There it was, and I would agree with you. There's no chance for Austin to to pull back at that point. Well, and he was still in the field of play. Yeah. 45 seconds left, first half. A good run because he stopped the clock, too, and I only got the first down. Nelson keeps it again. Hesitates. Brings it past the 50. There's Billy Austin for the second consecutive time to bring him down. Again, he goes out of bounds, 38 seconds left. We talked before the game during our pregame segment how important the safety's role will be tonight. Billy Austin, Scott McGarrahan for the Lobos. We've called their names quite a bit. That time, McGarrahan guessed wrong, and Nelson went right behind them to get the gain. Again, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. And Rice is doing a real nice job with this option. They're three for three so far. They've had the ball three times. They've scored three touchdowns. This is their fourth possession. Now the clock is a huge factor. But they have really moved the ball with relative ease. David Lee, the offensive coordinator for Rice, has done a nice job helping to call the plays. He, of course, is a familiar name as we see the uh, first down, uh, not quite a first down there. Uh, David Lee, a former New Mexico assistant and a former head coach at UTEP. He was an assistant coach under Hatfield, Ken Hatfield, when he was at Arkansas. 
So it'll bring up second down and very short. Uh, it's not really a concern of the Lobo defense right now. The first down marker. And they're interested in keeping Rice out of the end zone. Just about ready to set the clock. Start it up. Actually, uh, they won't start it up because uh, Nelson was driven out of bounds. But the play clock now is ready to go. Oh, the game clock is running too. That's bizarre. It is. Up the middle to Whitlock. Oh. Hit down by his knees by uh, once again. I think that was Billy Austin. Well, that was strange. The clock start. Yeah, I thought he was out of bounds. They must have called that he was still in bounds in that last play. How that could have been. He was clearly driven out of bounds the play before. They still have two timeouts. They're not using either one. Three tackles in a row by Austin, and now they'll intentionally ground the ball to stop the clock with 23 seconds to go. That would have been a good time, I thought, to use yes. one of the timeouts. Yes. You probably want to save one in case you have to go for a field goal. In case you're wondering, their field goal kicker, Mike Ruff, his longest and only field goal of the year has been from 24 yards out. One for four. He's missed three others that have been longer attempts than that. Lobos, I'm sure, very aware of that. As you mentioned, Mike, number one priority, keep them out of the end zone, which has been much easier said than done so far for this Lobo defense. Well, it's important here to get a little taste of uh, success for the defense going into halftime. No question about it. That's second and ten. Ball at the New Mexico 42. Nelson keeps it, breaks free from one tackler, still on his feet, down to the 31, and the tackling has not been good for the next time. And I think uh, part of it has been the wetness out there, but still, you have to wrap up as Rice uses the timeout. Well, they use their their second of the half. They still have one more. It was a first down carry. You may wonder why call the timeout, because the clock would start again as soon as they're at the line of scrimmage for the next play. Chris Carroll missing tackle number two, you see flying through. There's McGarrahan, needs help from others to bring him down. Boy, it's almost as if the Rice uniforms are extra slick, slippery tonight because the Lobo defense has been really having trouble making those tackles. Well, we want to welcome you home, New Mexico, to Great Fall Television here on Q13. Tomorrow night at 6, it's 60 minutes, followed by Touch by an Angel. Then it's Candace Bergen and Tim McCarthy starring in Mary and Tim on the CBS Sunday movie. You'll find great entertainment this fall when you come home to CBS on Q13, TV10, and Z6. Mike Powers and Andrew Paul with you live here on Q13. The Lobos trying to go to 5-1 and 2-1 and and in the Western Athletic Conference. Very first whack game ever here at Rice University. Well, neither team's defense has had a stop yet tonight. The Lobos have scored points on all four of their possessions. Two field goals, two touchdowns, the last one resulting in a two-point conversion as well. Rice has three touchdowns on their three possessions. Right now, the Lobos' best friend may be the game clock. Maybe the only thing that can help stop Rice so far. Again, 15 seconds left, first half of play. Ball at the 30. Up the middle, good stop inside by that New Mexico defense. Jamie Whitlock, the ball carrier. Well, they use a timeout, now with 10 seconds to go. I think they're going to bring on their field goal unit and go for it here. I'm surprised they didn't let the clock run down to about a second or so, so this would assure being the final play of the half. And coming on now is Mike Ruff out of Dallas, a senior. He's perfect on point after attempts this year, but as Andrew mentioned, only one of four on field goal tries, and this one will be marked down at about the 33, so that will be a 43-yard attempt. By far his longest of the season. Longest attempt, too. He has missed three others longer than 24, but hasn't tried one this long yet. Well, let's take a look. Good snap. It's down. Enough leg. And it's through. So Mike Ruff comes through. Big field goal for the Rice Owls. And the Lobos unable to get the stop there. Right before the half, five seconds to go. The Rice Owls lead 24-21. I never expected to see a first half like this where each team goes four for four and scoring on its possessions. Unbelievable. The defenses of both teams not able to make a stop. The quarterbacks have been the huge key. Chad Nelson, 
eight carries for 95 yards and a touchdown, the quarterback for Rice. Meanwhile, Donald Sellers, the quarterback for New Mexico, 12 carries for 96 yards. So each quarterback's done its job. It's the defenses that have had their problems. Well, with five seconds left, uh, look for Rice just to squib a kick down and uh, try to wrap this first half up, take the lead into the locker room. Lobos defensively just have not been in sync in this game. No, in fact, the only reason that they were able to hold Rice to a field goal there was because of the clock. Otherwise, who knows, Rice could have been well on its way to another touchdown. Well, a 54-yard scoring drive, eight plays, minute seven, and Rife Ruff with the 43-yard field goal. Ruff is not the, uh, the kicker during on the kickoffs there. It's Scott Grimes. Sort of a similar situation to the Lobos. Jason Bloom and Colby Casey. Kicking chores. There's the squib. It'll bounce to Larry Brown at about the 12. The clock now starts. And that will wrap up the first half of play. Finally, Brown is brought down. Both teams will head to the locker room. A lot of strategy, no doubt, will be discussed, especially on the defensive side of the ball for both teams, because their offenses have been unstoppable. We're going to take a timeout with our score, Rice 24, New Mexico 21, and we'll be back to Houston right after this short timeout. And welcome back to Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas, with the Rice Owls leading New Mexico at the half. 24-21 our score. And again, welcome back Mike Powers along with Andrew Paul. And there has not been much defense at all in the first half. And as you mentioned, everyone on each possession scored. Not everyone, but each time the team had the ball, they scored. So that's highly unusual in college football. Yeah, both teams go four for four in the first half. The Lobos get a couple of field goals and two touchdowns. And Rice comes away with three touchdowns in that field goal right before halftime to take the lead at the intermission. Obviously, the Lobos' concern at the half is defense. They haven't been able to stop the option so far. Give Rice a lot of credit. They've run this very effectively. But the Lobo defense needs to go back to the drawing board and see if they can come up with certain ways to stop this. And again, it, it was pretty misleading, or at least we didn't know what to make of, of the Rice record of 1-3 and three because they had played Ohio State, they did win at Tulane, then they lost to Kansas State, and then lost at Air Force. So it was, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where, well, was Rice really struggling because of themselves or because of the competition they were playing? Absolutely, and it's hard to tell. And who, who does know? I mean, you, you talk about that schedule, and it's hard to say. Was the competition that good? And Ohio State's victory today over Penn State would indicate yes, and Notre Dame a week ago. But obviously, uh, you know, the rest of the schedule, it's hard to say how good this Rice team really was. Well, they look pretty good to New yeah, Mexico they certainly in the have. first half. Well, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights now. Again, uh, Rice took the early lead. The Lobos got a field goal, and then it was George going on in with the touchdown. They led it 7-3. to three. This was their first possession of the game. The Lobos answer, and right into your living room. Watch Lennox Gordon. Right over the top and almost right into your living room. That's the same play the Lobos ran on two fourth downs during the first half, and they were successful on all those plays. 10-7 New Mexico, and then Rice soon took the lead for good. Missed tackles. Yeah, Michael Perry barreling his way into the end zone, and at least three missed tackles on that play. Looked like the refrigerator Perry, the way the Lobos were tackling. Lobos had a field goal, and then the quarterback, Chad Nelson, takes it in. And Rice goes up by eight points, and New Mexico comes back. And we want you to see the block by Chris Shelton open the door for Lennox Gordon. And a field goal to end the first half, put Rice on top by a score of 24 to 21. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with more football right here on Q13. Again, 24-21, Rice is our score. Okay, but we're going to stay here then, right? Oh, we do. They probably didn't have a weather break, did they? Good thing they, good okay. thing they got us, man. Jeez. Yeah, good thing. All right, what should we talk about? Here? It's not running. Was it oh, yeah, I see that. With Lobos coming, I'll say Lobos came in to 21st in the country. Okay. 
on the defense. On the defense. Uh, would you say that again, Howard? I'm sorry. Okay. How much time will we have on the stats? Probably about. Uh, we'll be back here for about a minute, maybe. Oh, that'd be great. I'll, I'll tell you what, if you could give me, well, let's see, how about like a 15 second view would be great. Okay. Twenty-four, twenty-one. Rice leads New Mexico, and what you will not see on the stats are a lot of passing numbers or turnovers, which is a bit surprising at the halftime break. Uh, both teams just rushing the ball up and down. Yeah, look at that. Two hundred and fifty-three yards rushing for Rice so far in the first half. The time of possession in great favor for New Mexico, but it wouldn't indicate that if you look at the scoreboard. Rice on top. The Lobos have only been giving up one hundred and six yards per game. Twenty-first best in the nation rushing, but Rice has been running at ease. Let's see if the Lobos can do better in the second half. We'll be back with the kickoff in a moment. I didn't see what that was. What was it? And both of them had the same amount of possessions for each, but and maybe even less than that. Okay. Yeah. I think the defense is going to come out the other way. Say, Howard, any chance of isolating on number 80 for the Lobos on uh, on the special teams here? That might be fun. I don't know if we'll have time or not, but he's the one guy that's always around the ball, they say. Rice will get the ball to start the second half of play, leading New Mexico 24-21. See the crowd here at uh, one of the legendary stadiums in college football, Rice University, home to a Super Bowl. And now the Lobos will see if they can get it together on defense. Jason Bloom ready to kick it off. It's on its way, and this time it doesn't look like Rice will be able to return it. That's the first time that has happened tonight. Well, the Lobo defense will get a look at them here to start this second half. Had some trouble there in the first half stopping the Rice option. We talked a little bit about Brian Erlacher out of Lovington on the special teams earlier. Let's take a look at the young man. They say he's the guy who's always around the ball. Well, not a return here, but one of the first men downfield driving his way down and always in position to make a tackle. Chuck Moeller, when we asked him, the special teams coach, who's the one guy who's always around the ball? Brian Erlacher. Didn't even, didn't even take didn't a, even finish a the split sentence. second, and he was already saying Brian Erlacher. 
Here's George to start the second half. To the 30. He's got some room. McDonald has the angle and brings him out of bounds, but not before another huge gain for the Rice Owls. Boy, that has to be frustrating for the coaching staff to come out of the locker room and have Rice do that to him. Absolutely not exactly the answer that Lobo fans were looking for from this defense to start the second half. George just gets outside, nice blocking, and then foot speed. Runs right past Chili Davis. And Ramus McDonald had to come over from his cornerback spot on the other side of the field to make the tackle and force him out of bounds. Well, they say he went out of bounds at the New Mexico 42, and it'll be first and 10 from there. So a 38-yard gain. This has been unbelievable what Rice has been able to do on the ground so far tonight. Chad Nelson keeps it, has some room. Thought about pitching it and does. And that was close to the first down marker. That's how the option should be run. And Michael Perry takes it the final three or four yards. Well, with a nine-yard gain there, because it looks like he just may be shy of the first down. Rice is now over 300 yards rushing on the evening. Nice pitch. Real nice pitch. Nice job there by Rice. They do get the first down, so actually a 10-yard gain. Over 300 yards rushing tonight for Rice. Mike, in the, in the last three games combined against competition like TCU and BYU included, the Lobo defense only allowed 231 yards rushing. This Rice defense, or excuse me, option has really done a job with the Lobo defense. Perry again. Tripped up at the 30, falls forward to about the 27. And this is by far Chad Nelson's best ball game. And that offensive line of Rice, even though it has been shuffled around a little bit, is doing the job. Well, you see George, number 32, went one way. Wood, number, uh, excuse me, that was Wood, number 32. One way, George, number 24, goes the other, leaves the middle open. Local defense has been real susceptible for that. Yeah. Down. Spencer again, Spencer George. And then we have Carry close to the first down sticks. Scott McGarryhan helped out inside there. Let's see where they mark it. It's going to be awfully close to the first down. Need to get inside the 22, near the 21. And they give him the first down. They say it was close enough, didn't even need to measure it. Move the yard sticks again. Now Benji Wood brings the play in from the sidelines. Jamie Whitlock goes out. This Rice team offensively is just gaining more and more confidence with, with each carry. Nelson still with it, and he hits McGarrahan. Scott McGarrahan came up from the safety slot and put the hit on Nelson. Well, there's a nice play by the Lobo defense. Scott McGarrahan, the safety, comes up to make the stick. Right there. Nelson thought he could barrel over him. And Terrence Burton comes in to give some help. I think uh, Nelson was a little surprised to see McGarrahan there, really, uh, because the pitch man was open. Maybe a good example of how the Lobos have made some adjustments here in the second half to try to stop this option. Well, it's second down, and uh, we'll call it 11. And that's about the first time the Lobos have stopped Rice on first down. Nelson hesitates, looking in the end zone, has a man, and just overthrows him. Well-designed play. Michael Perry was open, but a little bit too strong. Well, Scott McGarrahan, Ramus McDonald, they're still con conversing on the field. Someone missed the assignment there. The Lobos fell for the play action. You see the numbers for Chad Nelson. Obviously not a big passing team and just overthrows his man. Somebody was supposed to be there and missed the assignment. We talk about wow. this is assignment defense. And if you miss your assignment, certainly Rice can take advantage of that for some big plays. Lobos really catch a break there. And now with third and 11, I wonder if Rice would throw the ball on two consecutive plays. Unheard of, let's see. 12.33 to go, third quarter. Fumble, the Lobos come away with it. 
for New Mexico. That's Bill Borchers, the sophomore, who makes the big play. Well, Borchers just took it right away from Nelson. What a great job by the defense. We talked about this before the game in our pregame segment, how important it was for the Lobos to force a couple of turnovers. Otherwise, Rice would just march down the field and score. And this is certainly a big one by the defense. Bill Borchers, number 98, the sophomore, with a huge, huge recovery off that fumble. That was the strangest play. I didn't see it happen initially, and I heard the crowd roar, and uh, Borchers was there with the football. Take a look at it again, Borchers number 98. <laughs> it came flying out of there, and he picked it up from the ground. Good heads-up play to pick it up. Nice job by the Lobo defense. By far the biggest defensive play of the game. Turnover, Rice Owls. And the Lobo offense will now have the ball for the first time in the second half. And Knox Gordon. Takes on one defender, brings it out, a gain of 11. And New Mexico gets an opportunity now. That was Warwick Franklin with the tackle. But a little late, first down to Mexico. How often do you see this? A big play by the defense, sparks the offense. Lennox scored right up the middle. Great blocking by the wow. Lobo offensive line. And Chris Gordon, Wallace was there. Yeah, breaks the tackle too to gain a few extra yards after that. And we'll have an official's timeout now. I don't know if they've decided to measure or not, but it looks like some confusion over on the far sidelines, and they'll get that straightened out in a moment. Again, uh, to reiterate what we said during halftime, the third quarter has not been kind to the Rice Owls this year, and uh, that's one thing Ken Hatfield, the coach for the Rice Owls, I always want to say Air Force. <laughs> I guess I'm still used to that, even though he's been gone from the academy for a long time now. But uh, he said in his conference call, boy, we've got to come out in the second half and be ready to play. I'll give it to Gordon again. Gordon on his way to another 100-yard rushing game. Franklin makes the stop. But this guy, Lennox Gordon, is, is better than we thought he would be, at least at this stage of his career. Well, last year he was their third string tailback behind Winslow Oliver and Shea Johnson, and now he's stepped up to be the guy. Dion Marion pushed him during summer practice uh, to be the number one guy. Reginald Johnson also back there. But you're right, Gordon has really stepped it up, and there's no question he's their number one tailback. Second and two. Gordon again. That will be a first down to Mexico. You know, you allude to the third quarter jinx for this Rice team. It, it's so hard to explain why that's the case. Look at last week's game against Air Force, the perfect example. They were thin, 14-12, trailing by just four. Air Force recovers a Rice fumble, goes in for a touchdown, and then Rice throws an interception, and Air Force gets another touchdown. And before you know it, a 14-10 game is a 31-10 game at the end of the third quarter. Dennis Franchoni may be feeling a little bit better now about uh, the way his defense is after forcing the turnover. Ball at the 46, fake inside. Sellers looking downfield, has nowhere to go, and he is sacked. First guy in there was Kalu, and he gets his first sack of the season. First sack adds to his record total, now has 16 sacks in his Rice career. He's the all-time sack leader at Rice University. That's what we call, though, a coverage sack. I mean, this, this certainly gave Sellers enough time to throw the ball. Right there, he should have been able to release it, but nobody was open downfield. And that's been the biggest problem for the Lobo receivers this season, next to dropping passes, is just getting open in the first place. Well, maybe you want to see Donald Sellers throw that ball away at that point. Yeah, good point. I mean, that's what he needs to learn to do as well, throw it out of bounds. Second and 24. Jump on the draw. Muscling down, picking up about eight before Masick and Benford meet him on the other side of the 50-yard line. This is quite a stadium we're near tonight, Mike. You mentioned Rice Stadium, home for Super Bowl Seven, Miami's victory over Minnesota. Oh, no, no, don't bring it up. The Vikings Man. fans don't want to hear that. It was a long time ago, Mike. I can get over I that remember now. it. I remember it. You're still recovering I was from the just, loss of the Giants last week. I was just a small child when that happened. But. Let's take a look. Did uh, Shelton lose the ball at the end of this? Oh, he look did. At that. It was stripped away. Lobos caught a break. Sellers. He is hit as he releases it. Good pressure up the middle by Massick, who does a little bit of talking. And he'll go back and say another word or two, perhaps, to Donald Sellers. Well, even though it's only the second incomplete pass that Sellers has thrown tonight, the Lobo passing game has been non-existent. 
attention hit as he lets it go. Lobo's lucky that one wasn't picked off. Just 53 yards passing for New Mexico. And this will be the first punt of the ball game. That's right, we saw our first turnover of the ball game, now our first punt. Each team's offense scored on each of their possessions in the first half. Four for four for each team. Now 0 for 1 for each team here to start the third quarter. Michael Perry is the deep receiver. Hunt almost blocked. And Perry will have a chance to return it inside the 10. Good coverage by Jamal Woods hustling down. The reserve defensive back makes a nice play. With 9.39 to go in the third quarter, Rice leads New Mexico 24-21. Now this. Yeah, how's that? That was a different one, huh? Now this. Now this from Ace Hardware. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what I had. Usually they say, now this from Ace Hardware. They read the defense is what they do, you know, depending on what the defense does. Good thing I crammed with you before. This is more, this is closer than I feel comfortable with. Uh -huh. Well, that too. <laughs> Two possessions in the second half and no scoring. That's a first in this ball game. Rice 24, New Mexico. 21. Now the Rice Owls did move the ball down the field their last possession only to have it end on a fumble. Let's see how the Lobo defense does now. 9.39 to go third quarter. That's George again. Spencer George up the middle and a good rush by that Lobo line that time. Well if you think about it, the Lobo defense really hasn't stopped Rice yet tonight. Because the field goal they had before the half was a result of time running out in the first half, mm -hmm. forcing them to kick the field goal, and then that fumble. But they haven't had a real defensive stop yet, forcing Rice to punt the ball away. And this would be no time, there'd be no time better than right now, because the offense had to punt the ball for the first time. Now if the defense can make a stand, I think that provides so much momentum and confidence for this team. And Love was doing another good job that time, second consecutive on first down on the defensive side of the ball. Wishbone, They'll give it to the fullback up the middle, Whitlock, and he is stopped by that New Mexico defense. Let's see who's underneath that. John Wingate, another Texas product who uh, has been plagued throughout his career by that uh, bad toe, had a screw taken out of it uh, during the offseason, and the coaches say he just cannot push off that foot yet because of the, the pain that it gives him in his toe. When he is healthy, the guy is an animal. Yeah, I would think if he was 100%, he'd be starting. That's how good a player he is for the Lobos. A couple of years ago, had a great season for New Mexico. Well, when he comes in, he's about uh, 6'4", 263, and that gives the Lobos a little bit of a different look, a bigger look on the defensive end in place of Chris Carroll. Third down and six. Little pitch back. That's Wingate forcing the action, and the Lobos are going to stuff up. Oh, that, that's a big-time play. That's the biggest play of the game. You know, the fumble was a huge momentum shift, but that's the first time the Lobo defense has stopped them. McGarrahan comes up and had a guy blocking him, too, and just got around him to make the stuff. Spencer George broke the tackle from Wingate, but McGarrahan was waiting. This is a big-time play, because you know what, folks? If McGarrahan misses him here, there is plenty of room for George to keep running, and McGarrahan just gets right around the blocker and takes him down. Behind him, there was nothing but open field. McGarrahan with the celebration, and now Tucker Phillips ready to 
punt the ball away for the first time. This is one of the better punters in the country. Lobos have a rush on. Phillips gets it off, and that was not a great punt, but Burton Martin falls on it at the 47. Was not uh, pretty looking, no style points, but Martin gets the job done with the fair catch. 7.19 to go, third quarter. Rice on top of New Mexico, but the Lobos have the ball and a chance to either tie it or go ahead. Well, certainly each team has made a couple of adjustments at halftime effectively. Lobo defense, say they couldn't get the job done in the first half. And keep in mind, this option is something the Lobos haven't seen yet this year. They're playing on artificial turf for the first time this year. Plus, it's wet. So I'm sure all those things really come into play why the Lobo defense wasn't so effective. After the 31-yard punt, the Lobos take over officially at the 48. And Lennox Gordon fell down. And Donald Sellers will go down a loss of about one. Well, that was supposed to be a handoff to Gordon. And I don't know if it was because he slipped or just missed the play. I think he did slip. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. Sellers turned around, and Gordon was supposed to be there, and he wasn't. So Roy White will go out along with Chris Shelton. And a new play, second down and 11. Jeremy Banks, the slot receiver, bottom of your screen, from the shotgun. Wide open, out of the backfield is Lennox Gordon, and he gets the first down. There was nobody out there covering him, and finally McCalla had to come up to make the hit, but not before the first down. And a big block downfield by Tommy Hemphill, number 85 for the Lobos, and that's where the players came over to congratulate him as much as anyone else on this play. Watch Tommy Hemphill right here. Boom, nice block. <laughs> and gave Lennox Gordon a few extra yards. Well done. Another look at it. Tommy Hemphill, sophomore from Archer, Florida. I like that play. Lobo's putting the ball in the air. I think they need to do that even more to be effective here offensively. At the 32. High formation. And Shelton's going nowhere. Well, that's usually a very effective play for the Lobos. A little bit of a, uh, a counter play to Shelton, but Larry Thompson was there along with Arthur Terry, and that offensive front couldn't open a hole that time. When we talk about the option, we talked about it a lot so far tonight. It's what Rice has been running all night long, and the Lobos run it a lot too. It's a triple option. There's three choices, and that's the first one is the fullback dive that Sellers gave off. If he doesn't, he's got two other options. Keep it himself or pitch it to the halfback, Lennox Gordon. The dive is usually the one that doesn't provide the most yardage but it helps set up the fake if you can run it effectively once in a while. White and Hemphill in the two tight end set. Option coming right. Little hesitation from Sellers, and the pitch goes out of bounds. A nice job that time by Kalu, the uh, defensive end for Rice. And I'll tell you, Sellers looked a little hesitant about what to do that time. Yeah, he did. And watch the end of the play. I want to see where the ball is when this play is over. The Sellers comes out and keeps it. See if the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, it just completely, it, a lot of us get lucky that ball wasn't turned over. That's a situation where I, I think Sellers, if he had pitched early, they might have had something on the corner there because that would have taken Kalu out of the play. That's a tough call, though, that happened so fast. It's now third down and nine. Lobos trailing it by a field goal. Blitz up the middle. Lobos pick it up. Sellers trying to gain some room. He'll be short of the first down by about six yards. And now the coaches have another interesting decision to make with the ball at the 28. Winship, the defensive lineman, came up along with Benford to bring down Sellers. Well, they're going to, looks like, go for the field goal. And this would be another career high for Kobe Kaysen. It would be about 45 yards. He's made a 38-yarder and a 40-yarder so far tonight. His previous high before this evening's game was 37. Bramley will spot it down at about the 35. He is a quarterback. Kaysen has it on its way. Low liner, and that will be wide to the right. So the Rice defense holds, and we are scoreless here in the second half. 442 to go, a change of possession. Rice on top, 24-21. We'll be back after this message.
Lobos stopped for the first time. Shot guys. Well, you that, sort of did. Okay, good. I couldn't tell how far wide right was that. Was it far? It's raining again hard, isn't it? Harder. Mexico continues to trail Rice after that wide right field goal try. And here's a look at it. Grambley with the hole. It was a good hold. Kaysen actually got good footing on the wet turf. Just pulled it right. Now the Rice Owls with the ball again. And right there, Billy Austin from his safety slot coming up to put the hit on Michael Perry right away. Lobo defense has looked better here in the second half. Can't emphasize enough though how important it is that the safeties have a big game. Billy Austin, one of them there with a nice stop. The junior from Houston playing in front of his family and home crowd. Look forward to this game coming here and I'm sure all the players do are from Texas, particularly those from this Houston area. Really like coming back and playing in front of family and friends. Chad Nelson brings the Owls up to the line, second and seven. To the fullback up. That is Wood. Benji Wood gets the first down. Billy Austin again with a tackle from behind that time. We talked to Austin during the week. He said he wasn't recruited very heavily by Rice. In fact, really didn't consider coming here at all. You can see Austin number 16 come into your screen and make the tackle. Nice one around the ankles. Well, Bill Borchers was right there, and he was trying to read, instead of making the hit on the fullback right away, he's trying to read the quarterback, and by then it was too late. Ken Hatfield does have a couple of obstacles when he's recruiting players here to Rice. The option, one of them, some guys don't like to play for the option. Also, a very good academic school and it eliminates a lot of candidates. A little bit of a reverse around. It's George, Spencer George. He's got some room. I don't think anyone is going to catch him. And coming up to bring him out of bounds again is either Jamal Woods, it is Jamal Woods, who made a liar out of me, brought him down inside the five-yard line. I, I know you don't mind lying about that one, but there was a serious breakdown in the line of scrimmage for the Lobos on that particular play, and Jamal Woods had to come from the opposite end of the field to make that tackle. Let's see if we can see here who comes through. There's Austin, and I think that was Borchers that came into your picture there, who just completely missed the tackle and blocked out of the screen. And then it's just a foot race. Jamal Woods, good speed yeah. to bring him down. And that could be a huge play here if the Lobo defense can make a nice goal line stand. They'll mark it at inside the one yard line. Oh, look actually. at those numbers. 131 yards rushing so far for George. Nine carries up the middle. Touchdown Whitlock. Untouched. Very nice hole off right tackle. So Rice takes the lead now. 30 to 21 adding to it with 321 to go and now maybe the clock even a little bit of a factor. Sure it is. We're late here in the third quarter. Lobo's offense uh, certainly needs to put points on the board quickly now. Coming into this game, Rice had six rushing touchdowns. We're ready tonight now. That's number four. Mike Ruff will try to add the 31st point for the Owls. He does. Now a 10-point Rice lead over the New Mexico Lobos. And let's find out what Donald Sellers and company can do after this break.
all have their assignment. His job is to go for the quarterback. Someone else's job is to go for him. So he's to so they pinned, they I think pinned it's Johnson. Yeah, Johnson right there. Right Very good Johnson. block. Let's give that guy credit. Who is it? Is that 71? Yeah, 71. Is it second? Yeah, I think you're right. Mark's been a right time by me. With the rain coming down a little bit harder, Rice has taken a 31-21 lead over New Mexico. And that Owl offensive line doing the job here again in the third quarter. 321 to go. And the Lobos will return, or at least try to return the kick from Scott Grimes. Squibber. And it slides out of bounds. So we'll get good field position with no time off the clock. He'll be more than 35. happy to take that. Yeah, yeah. Great field position there. And we saw one of those earlier from uh, the Lobos, Jason Bloom. And I, I do think that the footing out there is a little treacherous. And these guys are trying to be as careful as they can. Free kick out of bounds on a kicking team. Ball will be put in play 35 yard line. Well, let's see what the Lobo off can, offense can do now. Trailing by 10, another opportunity here in the third quarter, their third possession of the half. There's a look at the uh, total yardage in the ball game now. Neither team passing much. But Rice uh, approaching 400 yards on the ground. Fake inside, Sellers with the ball. He needs to get rid of it, and he does, but it is underthrown to Larry Brown. The Lobo is really slow in, in that play developing. Brown and Banks going downfield. The patterns, I just think, were too long for that play. That was a play, it should have been more of a 10 yard out. Larry Brown, it could be the wet turf. It just took him too long to make that cut and get open for Sellers to find him. Well, Larry Brown has been the most consistent Lobo receiver. Uh, four catches in the first game, four in the second, then five, three, and six last week against TCU. But not much doing tonight. Well, was that four wide receivers on this formation? And they run it. But I'll tell you what. TC, or rather Rice, are waiting for the Lobos that time, including number 97, Andrew Hughes. Let's take a look here at the backs and receivers for New Mexico. Lennox Gordon having a big night at tailback. Brown, Banks, and White are your receivers there. That offensive front led by Turner and Gleason, the seniors, along with Kevin Nett, a Houston product. Third down and 11, Lobos. Well, if the Lobos are going to throw here, I would think that Rice would expect that. So they may be able to pull something off here on the ground to fool him. From the shotgun, though, you'd expect a passing play on third and long. That's what we're looking at right now. They try that inside screen, batted down by Kalu. So the Lobos go three and out for the first time tonight. Here's that defensive front led by Kalu for the Rice Owls. Clifton was hurt earlier in the ball game. The linebackers, Reynolds, Bedford, and Massick again. And here are the defensive backs who have done a good job. We really haven't had a chance to call their names much tonight, mainly because the Lobos haven't thrown the ball a lot. We had mentioned right before that series began, Mike, that the rain was coming down a bit harder. Thus, you'd expect maybe the Lobos to run the ball. Instead, they call two passing plays, and it results in three plays and a punt. Boom back to punt for the second time in the game. And he gets this one off. That's a beauty. Oh. Perry will take it at about the 11. Evades one tackler. Evades another, Blake Irwin, who just got a foot. And Perry will go down at the 23. With 2.16 to go. And Rice up by 10. 
This is uh, no question about it. The uh, time for the Lobo defense to step up again. You mentioned a relatively small crowd on hand here tonight. 70,000 seat stadium though, whatever the crowd is anything less than that makes it look even smaller than it probably is. Well, they were hoping for 22, but the rain kept a lot of folks away. And all you Dr. Quinn fans, take heart. Q13 will be playing the episode that was scheduled for tonight, tomorrow afternoon at 3. Don't miss Jane Seymour and Joe Lando and Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, Sunday afternoon at 3. Great television for everybody this fall on Q13, TV10, and Z6. 2.16 to go, third quarter. Spencer George again barreling through. Last time he touched the ball, almost went the distance. Mention a 70,000 seat stadium for a university that has a student enrollment of only 2,600. Which, by the way, that's the smallest in Division 1A for a football program. Just a 2,600 uh, student body. And certainly that makes things tough on Ken Hatfield, the head coach, in terms of players coming into the program and just walking on. When you're, you're only dealing with 2,600 students, you're not going to get a lot of the student body to come out and try out for the football team. And of course, uh, being a private university, I don't know how much it costs to go here, but maybe it's a little bit more expensive for uh, the average kid to walk on, spend the money, and come here and play football. They have a hard time getting enough kids to uh, play scout team and, and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Up the middle, the handoff still on his feet. Bringing it on down. The Rice Owls get another first down. That time it was Benji Wood. Well, we're coming down to the end here of the third quarter, and the defense has done a better job. Yeah, they did give up the touchdown. Never thought it would take the Lobos, needing a minimum now of 32 points to win this ball game against Rice. But that's exactly the position that the Lobos are in right now. Dennis Franchoni was concerned coming in that the Rice Owls would at least have the opportunity to run a lot of clock, uh, move the ball up and down the field, because that's the type of offense it is when it's, when it's working, and it has been working tonight. First down play, again up the middle. This time it is Whitlock. I tell you, they just keep running right at the Lobos, and the Lobos are still looking for answers. Can't emphasize enough how important this game is for New Mexico. 4-1 and one coming in. A very big win last week over TCU. You see Whitlock up the middle. Another missed tackle. Austin comes in to make it. McGarrahan's there, too. The safeties are doing all they can. They need some help up front. There's been a few missed tackles up there that's really hurt them. There's two defensive tackles for New Mexico are inexperienced. For the most part, Barrett Garrison and Bill Borchers are sophomores. They have not had an opportunity over the years to see this kind of offense. Last year it was Hawaii, and uh, this year, just Rice. And to George. Nice gain on first down again. Who's there to make the tackle? The two safeties again, Austin and McGarrahan. Lobo showed a bit of a blitz on that play as Bart Bernard, number 51, the linebacker, came at the line of scrimmage to rush. Rice has had all the right answers so far tonight. And that will be the last play of the third quarter. And they'll move the ball down to the other end, and we will take a timeout. The Lobos, 15 minutes away now, and they need to get something going on both sides of the ball. Rice is up 31-21.
Look at how windy that is. has picked up even more now as we get ready to start the fourth quarter rice up by 10 31 21 over New Mexico the owls with the ball inside New Mexico territory at the 45 second and four from there Big to wood a flag fly Spencer George with it Jamal Woods brings him down along with uh, a couple of other Lobos back there including Stan. Stan. Let's check out the flag Looks like it's going to be against New Mexico. Wow. It is. Well, nothing's going the Lobos' way right now. It's hard to really speculate how much the wet turf. Number 55, penalty is declined. First down. Yeah, they'll take that big gain instead of a five-yard penalty. As I was saying, it's hard to really speculate from up here how much, first of all, the Lobos playing on artificial turf from the first time affects them, and then to put on top of it such a wet turf. But it really doesn't look like it's coming to play that much. You'd like to think that's a nice excuse for the Lobos defensively. But I just think this Rice option is just giving them, it's just driving them crazy so far tonight. Really giving them fits. I think you just got to give Hatfield a lot of credit, the head coach of Rice. Uh, this offense has looked extremely good. No question about it. Their best effort of the season. 14 37 and counting left. Benji Wood up the middle. Guinea breaks a tackle and wrestled down by Jamal Woods up to 25. And Benji Wood, we saw his numbers earlier, uh, just outstanding along with Spencer George. The big gun for, for Rice, Michael Perry, has not had that great of an evening. It's been the other guys. Yeah, you're right. They've really spread it around nicely, though. Everyone's had a chance. Nelson, too. Nelson had the big first half. You see there the quarterback rushing for 96 yards. He's done a good job tonight. Hasn't been very effective passing, but they haven't needed him to pass the ball. He missed a wide open receiver in the end zone, but they wound up scoring a touchdown anyway on that drive. They have really played well, executing everything that they have hoped for offensively. Well, the, the officials call timeout here, and uh, the referee was looking at the clock up on top, I believe. He was not happy uh, with something, and now Rice will get a fresh play clock. And I'm sure Dennis Franchoni not very happy about that, so they'll be able to waste another uh, 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, Rice is going to wait till that play clock gets down. It's about five seconds or even less than that before they snap each play here. And the four. Oh, it came back. Somehow the ball bounced back to Nelson, and he makes the first down. What the heck happened there? We got to see this one again. That was unbelievable. The ball just came flying in from the huddle, or excuse me, from the pile, right back to Nelson. Heads up play on Nelson's behalf. Let's see what happens here. As the ball comes wow. popping loose, Lobo defense made a nice play, but Nelson heads up, grabbed it, and actually made a gain out of it. Not the first down. It, it hit off one of the Lobo interior linemen who was going to make the tackle. Another look at it there. And I think it may have hit off John Wingate inside there. Rice gets a huge break yeah. on that one. Inside the 20. First and 10 from there. Jamie Whitlock is the fullback. He has it spinning inside the 10, down to the 7. And Rice has a chance to almost put this game away with a touchdown. It's been Whitlock, George, Wood, Perry, and Nelson. If Rice can score here, Mike, you're absolutely right. They'd be up by 17 points. That's a lot to ask this Lobo offense to come back from, particularly if the defense continues to have problems stopping Rice. The offense just get, isn't getting enough chances. I really never expected to see this tonight. This Rice offensive unit has been really overpowering the Lobo defense. 
goal at the seven. Spencer George runs smack dab into Billy Austin who greets him with his goal. This would be his biggest stand as the Lobo defense has had all season. At least it gives the team a chance to come back and win this game. If they can hold him to it, a minimum of a field goal, they're still within two touchdowns and a chance to win this one. Play clock is and the ball has not been set yet. Taking a long time to do that, and I know that uh, that's a concern of Coach Franchoni's. It was uh, a week ago when the uh, referee took forever to get the ball set, and, and that was fine last week yeah, when the exactly. Lobos had the big lead. Yeah, sure, it's fine when you're on top. You want that game to end as quickly as it can. And when you're trailing, boy, that clock just moves quicker than you can ever expect. Second and goal at the four. Nelson keeps. This time the Lobos have an answer to it. Again, it's often is playing a whale of a ball game at a safety spot. Well, at least to this point, this brings up the biggest play of the game. Because it's third down now. No question Rice would go for a field goal after this play if they're not able to score here. And watch the Lobo defense. Billy Austin, number 16, is the main guy to make the tackle. The safeties have really played a heck of a game tonight for New Mexico, both Billy Austin and Scott McGarrahan. Ryan Taylor from Houston, the freshman, helped out as well. Two Houston homeboys right there, Taylor and Billy Austin. I really think this is the biggest play of the game so far. The Lobo defense really needs a stop here. Third down and goal at the three. Nelson Keeper, touchdown. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. Because now the offense has a huge burden on their shoulders to bring this team back. Unbelievable. Rice was one of the worst statistical offensive teams in the country coming into this game, but that really shows the competition they played. Made all the difference. Ohio State, Kansas State, Air Force. Nelson goes in. Option worked to perfection that time. Billy Austin came in, grabbed him by the ankles, but just a little too late. Rice on to at the extra point here. Mike Ruff again. Boots that one through, add another point on. And Rice now leads it 38-21 with 10.49 to go. The Lobos now need three scores to pull this one out. We'll be back with more Lobo football on Q13 after this timeout. Go home for a stiff one, huh? That's what I meant. <laughs> of course, you will probably just take out your flask. You've probably been nipping during the whole game. <laughs> Howard. Chad Nelson's second rushing touchdown of the evening. He's put Rice up now by 17, 38 to thir uh, 21 with 10.49 to go. Lobo's down by the 17 points. We need three scores now to shut out the Rice Owls the rest of the way. Put it in the end zone, Grimes. Lobos will not have an opportunity to return this one. They'll take over at the 20. Donald Sellers and company bring it on out. 
Well, almost unfathomable uh, numbers that Rice has put up so far tonight. Spencer George has rushed for unofficially 159 yards. Chad Nelson, the quarterback, 106 yards. Perry has rushed for 93 yards. Wood, 58 yards. Whitlock's rushed for 38 uh, 38 yards. Unbelievable numbers they've put up. They're nearing 500 yards in total offense so far for Rice tonight. Unbelievable. Yeah, Lobos may go into their... Uh no huddle type mode right now, more of a two minute drill the rest of the way. It'd be a good test to see how this offense can react to that. Downfield, Jeremy Banks with the reception. His first catch of the night. Not many chances for the Lobos through the air. Yeah, no question about that. Here is the hurry up offense. Good to see the Lobos use it here. It's still over 10 minutes to go, still plenty of time. But the Lobos need to score here quickly. And they've had trouble in their two minute offense. We'll see if they can work it well here. Sellers again, the shotgun. A little flare pass out to Lennox Gordon, and it drops. It'll bring up third down and two. No doubt the ball is wet. It's going to affect both Sellers throwing. Yeah, Sellers was upset, I think, with uh, Gordon there or someone. But Gordon didn't go on the ground to uh, to make the catch, and that maybe is what uh, Sellers was upset about. No, that would have been an awfully, uh, awfully tough reception for Gordon. Again, third down and two at the 28. The incomplete pass does stop the clock, so you look at that as uh, positive at any rate if you're a Lobo fan. Oh, oh, delay, oh. up the middle, that's Gordon. First down, New Mexico. Ruffin with the tackle, a reserve defensive back, Larry Ruffin out of Grapevine, Texas, along with Wesley Kubish. Kalu a little slow getting up to his feet on that last play. Holding his head now, it looks like. And the official stopped the clock as Kalu will come out of the ball game at least momentarily. They have gotten his a, face. Yeah, yeah so a shot to something. the face. Looks like he's going to be okay. <laughs> Boy, a picture's worth a thousand words, isn't it? He wants to know the number of that truck. Ball up to 34. Sellers, and he'll keep it. But I'll tell you what, that time the defensive end did a wonderful job, Rashad Reynolds, but Sellers didn't make, made the job easier for Reynolds by not making him, uh, he guarded two guys just the one. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, at that, that time what Sellers needs to do is make it more clear if he's gonna fake, if he's gonna fake it, then fake it, go through with it and keep it yourself. You're right, he didn't make the pitch clear enough. Galou. Has returned to the lineup. Sellers fakes. He'll keep it himself. Has some room. Past the midfield marker and down to about 41 inside Rice territory. Bedford hit him, but it's a first down to Mexico and more. Now the Lobos trying to hurry up, get the not next offensive play going. The clock's running down. Nine and a half minutes to go. Again, still plenty of time. But the Lobos need to strike quickly here, trailing by 17. And the most important thing after that, of course, is to hold defensively. Only done that twice tonight. Clock now moving after the chains are set. Good pressure up the middle. And again, Sellers is going to have to run. They're going to have a flag down. We're either going to have a hold or a face mask. Well, one thing that Dennis Franchoni likes about Donald Sellers is that he does not throw the ball in a tough coverage. Doesn't turn the ball over much. Only one interception this year. Only had three all of last season. But where the downside of that is, as you'll see on, on this last play, he chooses to run the ball an awful lot when a wide receiver isn't open. And that last play, you'd like to see him throw it away or, or at least try to get some a big play going there and maybe force into tough coverage once in a while. Now, you saw the signal from the referee. It was holding New Mexico. I thought there was a face mask on the play against Rice. But this one will go against the Lobos. Holding, number 71, on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. And that's Kevin Ned. They got one, but did they miss the face mask? Take a look. Let's see if you're right here, Mike. Oh, yeah, clearly. Oh, oh. look at that. Now, how do you miss that? I mean, obviously, we missed it live, but it looked like there was something going on, and that was clearly a face mask. Wow. And usually the officials will protect the quarterback more than anyone else in the field. Well, the one person you're constantly looking at is the quarterback as long as he has the ball. And the referee, that's his decision. That's his job to watch that. 
That's about a 20-yard penalty from where Sellers was tackled to now the line of scrimmage. First and 24, the ball is dropped across the middle. That's Jeremy Banks. In this weather, it's, you know, those kind of bullets like that are hard to catch, although Banks needs to make it. Yeah. I mean, he'll be the first to admit he should have caught that one. And you just wonder, with a couple of drop passes here and there, how much that affects Sellers' confidence in his receivers, thus choosing to run the ball once in a while in a passing situation rather than throwing it. Second and 24 at the 45. Really fumbles that. Hand off to Gordon. Ooh, now that's Reginald Johnson on the run. David Grenardo. I think Jeremy Banks made the tackle. I think, I think he tripped on Jeremy Banks' heel. Right, yeah. Well, we're going to credit Grenardo, the uh, defensive back for Wise. Well, Johnson's only had a couple of carries today, but he's made the most of it. And a couple of nice gains so far. Coach Fran waving at one of the Lobo players to uh, hurry it up, I think, is what he was saying there. Third down. Sellers with time, cross the middle. That's Burt Martin who makes the catch, and that's a first down. He beat McCalla on the play, and that's Martin's first catch of the night, I do believe. Now Martin's a little slow to get up to his feet. He's buried in the turf. Second catch for Martin tonight. Global players said they felt it was better to play on this turf wet than it was dry yesterday, because yesterday it almost felt like playing on concrete. Today there's a little more give to the turf when it's wet. But certainly, it's still going to hurt when you get a face plant. No, I don't understand that logic. I know you do. Sellers looking for the end zone, looking for Banks off his hands. Just turned around and got a hand on it. He had McCall. Well, he guessed the wrong shoulder. I think he thought Sellers would throw it over his right shoulder. He looked there first. Then when he looked back over his left shoulder, didn't focus enough and concentrate quickly enough to be able to catch the ball. Let's see if we can see Banks looking back for this one. Right there in his hands. I, I again think uh, that's a tough catch, but I think he'd be the first to admit he should have had it. 8:24 left to go. Sellers eludes one tackler. Going to keep it, and he'll pick up three, maybe four, but the clock keeps moving. Bernardo was there to make the stop after the short gain. It's third down, and we'll call it six. Boy, it seems like an almost half the passing play is designed to pass. Sellers winds up scrambling. And I think his offensive line is doing a good enough job, but the guys just aren't getting open. And there's the ball to Reginald Johnson, who drops it. It would have been tough to get a first down on that one anyway. And certainly there's no excuse to drop the ball. And that was at least the third or fourth drop pass we've seen on this series alone for the Lobos. And obviously going for it here on fourth down, no other choice. The clock's still very much a factor, but Mike, if they can't get in the end zone here, it really doesn't matter that much. You need to be able to score. If you can't score defensively, you can't stop them. All the time in the world is not going to make a difference. They need to get to the 21. Throwing the wrong way, the receiver broke inside. And the pass went outside, and that's Larry Brown still down. I wonder if he pulled a muscle or strained a ligament. And he remains down as well. But at first, he was the first down. Pain is say if the end of the season still be four and two. They've had a great season. Seven forty-five to go, and the Lobos down thirty-eight twenty-one. No, I don't think it was a. I don't think it was the way he fell. I think he.
Was probably need to slide into desperation mode down 38 21 with 745 to go and rice with the ball well the defense certainly hasn't been able to step it up but the offense hasn't scored in the second half either awfully tough to win when you can when you're limited like the lobos have been. how about that big hit by the lobos inside and that was number 55 ryan taylor the second big play well lobos still have a chance although a slim one they still have a chance and the defense needs to stop rice here Forcing the punt, three plays and a punt, get the ball back. Let's see if the offense can do something on its next possession. Clock just starts, and there's a look at Chad Richardson, the backup quarterback who has uh, checked in. That's kind of an interesting decision. Hmm. I mean, uh, Ken Hatfield thinks the game's over, apparently. Well, Nelson's played a heck of a ball game. Still seven minutes to go. I don't think this game is just over yet. First down. So. Might be there. Whitlock right up the middle again, his second carry in a row. And now we'll see a big third down play. Again, the defense can stop him here and force him to punt. It puts the Lobos at least uh, within reason to still have hope that they can come back to this game. Again, they're down by three scores. Troy Dunlap has checked in for New Mexico. He's a Houston native, a senior who sat out last season with a knee injury. Number 33 getting to play in front of the home folks as well. If you're wondering if Richardson will put the ball in the air here on third down, the backup QB is only one for 18 passing this season for four yards. So you're saying probably not. I'm just throwing out the stats. There he goes, quarterback draw, and he will be stuffed short of the first down. Well, the defense did its job. I mean, they really have played better in the second half. The scoreboard may not indicate that, but they really have, if you think about it. I mean, Rice was able to score on all four of its possessions in the first half. Defense has made a couple of stops here. Rice still has scored twice in the second half, but now the offense needs to do its job. And the clock starts now and then stops. 6.09 to go. There'll be a timeout on the field, and they will give that to New Mexico. Down 38 to 21. So the Lobos used one of their three timeouts in the second half. Trying to preserve a little bit of that clock on the punt return. We, met, we mentioned starting the third quarter, Mike, how Rice was not a very good third quarter team this year. They really changed things around today. Just want to touch that on each of the third and fourth quarter. See the Lobos have been shut out so far here in the second half. They were within uh, striking distance, no question about it. Only down 24-21 at the intermission. The offense has been shut out here so far in the final half. Ken Hatfield, really one of the most successful coaches in the country. He got the Air Force program started. Then went to Arkansas for a number of years, did well there, won a Southwest Conference championship, went to Clemson, had success there. But there, if you don't win a national championship and have double-figure wins every year, you're in trouble. So they ran him out, and he ended up at Rice. I mean, combined Arkansas and Clemson, a Hatfield coach team, went to a bowl game six straight years. So I mean, he knows how to coach. In fact, won National Coach of the Year honors back in 83 when he was at the Air Force Academy. One year, New Mexico was 10 and 1. Uh, Joe Morrison uh, was aced out for whack coach of the year by Hatfield. Low snap. Phillips picks it up nicely. All the way down to Burke Park at the 23. There's nobody down there to help him, so it's a foot race to get out of bounds. And he does at about the uh, 25 yard line. So New Mexico will take over there. We'll give Kevin Massick credit, credit for the uh, tackle. With an even six minutes to go. Well, the Lobos trying to create something there. Went for the block. They sent everyone and left Martin all by himself on the return. And so give Rice credit for its blocking there. Preventing the Lobos from even getting close for, for blocking that punt. Well, Dennis Franchoni looking for a little bit of a miracle right now. Something needs to happen and happen fast. When we flip the play card over as if to say, I didn't see miracle on that side. Maybe it's on this side of the card. Maybe it is. Mike Schultz, the assistant head coach, was right next to him. Mike grew up here in Houston. Recruits the area here extremely well. Sellers with time. Finally clears some room out. Has his man at the 35. That's Burt Martin. And, uh, disregard the fumble yeah. there. It's not. It's a perfect example of the ground causing a fumble. They don't allow that. 
play is dead. That's a nice pass play. Sellers to Martin in an obvious passing situation now. Martin with a nice clean cut, wide open. And a perfectly thrown ball there by Sellers. And as you can see, he was down before he let go of the ball. The officials are taking forever to spot the ball. Absolutely forever. There's Lennox Gordon looking for a block on the corner from Jeremy Banks. He stays inbounds, gain of four, clock moves. Thomas Benford was there to drive him out from Lamarck, Texas. Lobos need to move real quickly here as Gordon was not able to get out of bounds. Clock does stop as they move the chains, first down. Just stop momentarily until the chains are set. Right. Now you can see the clock runs. Looking downfield, comes off to the safety valve. So running back out of the backfield, Reginald Johnson again. McCalla there to push him out after the gain of about four. Interesting, at such a critical point in this game that Reginald Johnson is in, and Lennox Gordon is on the sideline. Johnson has played well. Not a big pickup there, but at least the clock does stop as Johnson gets out of bounds. Jimmy McGrew leaves, Burt Martin returns. Lobo's about a touchdown favorite coming into the game. Again, a little swing pass. And a uh, short gain on second down. Reginald Johnson again. But they're hoping that his uh, speed maybe break something and maybe a missed tackle and all of a sudden you have six. I tell you, he's looked good. I mean, I've been impressed with Johnson. He's had a couple of carries for nice gains and now back-to-back -back receptions. He stays in. And Gordon stays on the sideline here. It's third and short. The first down is more important than anything else right now. See in the corner of your screen, five minutes left to go. Here's the draw, and that's going nowhere. They tried to get it on third down. That'll be fourth down. Slid it right into Johnson there, and not much of a hole. No holes. Yeah, someone missed a blocking assignment on that one, but not a bad play call. I mean, a third and just about a yard or so. That's not a bad play call to get the first. That's fourth down now in two yards. Crowd trying to get into it here. Looking downfield. And in and out and back in the hands oh, of catch. Jimmy McGrew. Oh, what a catch. He drops that. The game's over. I mean, there's no chance that was fourth down. What an acrobatic catch here by Jimmy McGrew. I wonder if he was a juggler as a child. Look at the concentration. Unbelievable yeah, to get nice. the first down. That was nice. 26 in county. Lobos trail at 38-21. Sellers across the middle to Lennox Gordon. A nice tackle that time by Benford. Boy, the linebacker had him in sights all the way. Well, that's going to eat a lot of clock, and the Lobo offense needs to hurry up here. Scoring 17 points now is going to yeah. be awfully tough, but at least getting a touchdown here I think would give this offensive unit some confidence that they can move the ball down the field and score quickly. Looks left, goes right. He needs to get out of bounds and does. Pascal falls wide open downfield. Flag down on the play. We'll check it out and, and see what it is. Sellers there, I think, is applauding, but uh, it, he is a hold. And the Lobos will uh, move the sticks. They'll mark it from the spot of the foul there and be close to the first down. Coach Franchoni has an off week next week to get ready for San Diego State. Get a couple of young guys healthy. Holding on the defense, number 21, 10-yard penalty. It's Mike Stanley there making the call. And that is a first down for the Lobos. They'll spot it at the 30-yard line with 3.51 to go. Ward Franklin called for the holding penalty there. And the Lobos did have a man open downfield. Pascal Valls is new to the program this season. Slowly making the adjustment. And a swing pass, right side Johnson. Breaking free outside to the 20 yard line. And he's pushed out of bounds by Wesley Kubish. 
close to the first down, and that should be a first down for the Lobos, and it is. I'll tell you, Johnson has played extremely well. I mean, it, don't for, don't you know think I'm saying any, suggesting anything otherwise, but it is surprising that Lennox Gordon is not in the game here in a critical situation. Bertrand Martin helping oh. block it. Oh, look at that Lobo offensive lineman coming through. Hard to pick. I think that may have been Shane Jager who helped level that defender. And a quick pass out to Johnson and good coverage by Benford. Clock moving, 332 in count. And Sellers took a nasty hit on that throw, too, right after he let go of it. Not much of a gain, just one on the play. Yeah, the last block may have been many old already from Gonzalo High School. Third offensive line. Sellers on the scramble, down to about the 10. Be close to see if he got a first down here, needed to get to the nine. The clock will stop as they'll probably measure here. And it is a first down. So Lobos need to be ready once they get the ball marked for play and just not waste one or two seconds here. Can't do it. It's a long shot at best anyway. It's too bad. Down 17 takes out. You need to score three times. You can't score twice with two point conversions. You need to score three times. Now there'll be a timeout on the field. Rice takes it. We're going to take a timeout with 3.03 to go. And Rice up on the Lobos, 38-21. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see if you're right, right now. Uh, well, we could either do that catch, it was a second ago, a nice catch, or uh, the fumble we, we picked up in midair, or uh, what's the best touchdown? The offensive play was probably the, probably the big pass to Martin that set up that contest. Yeah, let me see. Let's, let's not use that fumble. We can, let's, uh, let's, 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 yeah, we let's try to keep it that way if we can, you know. All right, let's do the fumble if you can find it. And welcome back to Rice Stadium, Houston, Texas. The Rice University Owls leading New Mexico 38-21. First ever WAC game here at the stadium. Lobo's in deep trouble. Sellers rolling out, looks into the end zone, and we're going to have a flag way back in the backfield. And I think we may be getting a hold on New Mexico. That's exactly what it is. Play will come back. Donald Sellers, Mike, has rushed the ball now 22 times for 126 yards. Impressive numbers. But I don't think you want your quarterback running that much. And I would guess of those 22 plays, and I would think that nearly 10 of them were scrambles on broken passing opportunities that were designed passing plays. Nobody opened, and he had to make the most of them. At least it seems that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it may not be that many, but it certainly seems like almost half of them have been scrambling for whatever yardage you can get. Holding. Number 56, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. Well, Shane Jager set a UNM record last week for knockdowns by an offensive lineman. He gets caught with the holding there, bringing it all the way back to the 26. That was looking over to Coach Dennis Franchoni for the play. It's now first and goal at the 26. They marked the ball from the the penalty from the spot of the foul, and of course, Jager was well back in the backfield. Long way to go. Teller scrambles again. Fakes once. Nice little juke right there, driven out of bounds at the 17 yard line by the safety Warwick Franklin, but it does stop the clock. And right now, uh, let's uh, tell you who our Q13 
player of the game is, and it's that young man right there, Donald Sellers, senior quarterback for New Mexico. You heard his numbers a moment ago. 126 yards rushing, that's a career high. 13 to 23 passing, 137 yards. Donald Sellers, our Q13 player of the game. From the shotgun. Looking left, Pascal Voles slides down to make the great catch, can't do it. That'll bring up third down and goal. It's been a tough night all the way around for the New Mexico Lobos. Yeah, it really has. Again, though, a, a loss tonight certainly hurts. I mean, the Lobos came in really hoping and thinking they could win this game, go 5-1 and one into the bye week. But a loss, they're still 4-2 and two on the season. A lot of home games left. I mean, this team really has a good chance to finish up the season strong. Sellers is sacked way back inside the 30. We'll see where they mark the ball. Well, there's a nice exclamation point on this one. Yeah, Arthur Terry, give him credit for the sack. Well, what's unfortunate is that the Lobos were coming off what Dennis Franchoni called their, his best all-around game since he's been here in New Mexico. Offensively and, and defensively, they really dominated TCU, winning 27-7. And tonight, shown right there, the offense has struggled at times. The defense certainly has had its problems. Lobos been shut out here in the second half. It's just been a really all-around tough night for New Mexico. They need to go to the end zone. A little bit short of that. Lennox Gordon slides down on the fourth down play. And New Mexico turns the ball over, and Rice will have a chance now to run the clock out. Lennox Gordon remains down on the ground. It looks like he'll be okay. As you mentioned, Mike, next week, the bye week. Then the Lobos come home to take on San Diego State. I'm really looking forward to that one. The San Diego State Aztec squad, very good again here in 1996. The Lobos back at home. They've played well at home this season. See a couple of road games will be at SMU also. A couple of home games to finish it up. So still a schedule that the Lobos feel they got a really good chance to finish up strong. We'll see how this team responds. First time to really respond to some adversity this season. They got two weeks to think about it and come back and play well against San Diego State. Of course, we'll have those road games for you on Q13 from SMU and Tulsa. Wishbone offense working again. This time getting the carry. Number 25, Rod Newhouse, his first action of the game. He's the son uh, for you Cowboy fans. Is uh, daddy's uh, Robert Newhouse. You got hurt Former, uh, I guess you could call him fire point for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Expected to call uh, Newhouse's name a little more often yeah. tonight. He was listed in the starting lineup originally, then moved out. The place of Wood who came back in and had been a little banked up. We mentioned Benji Wood and bad shoulder. Back in the starting lineup. And he's out. And now getting some playing time here in the closing minute. The Lobos swarm all over Newhouse once again. And that will be enough, it looks like, for the first down. With less than a minute to go. And now they just need to sit on it once, and this game is over. Well, Lobos were hoping to do well here because this is a very fertile area for recruiting. And the Lobos have done exceptionally well in Texas uh, over the years and, and recently right here in Houston. Of course, uh, the most uh, prominent name, Winslow Oliver, but there are a lot of good football players right here. And New Mexico doesn't necessarily go head-to-head -head with Rice very often, but they do against schools like TCU and SMU, and along with Texas Tech. Richardson on the keep of the quarterback, and that should wrap it up. Well, with that being said, that's why the win over TCU is so big, and that game at SMU will really be a big one, too, in a few weeks. The Lobos can beat both TCU and SMU this season. Even with the loss here to Rice being 2-1 and one against the Texas school, it's a real successful season for New Mexico. Dennis Franchoni will now come across the midfield, look for Ken Hatfield, who's uh, the opposing coach. Uh, two coaches with a lot of respect for each other. Coach Dennis Franchoni, I'm sure very disappointed in the way his team played tonight, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And now the Lobos will get back with that bye week and work on things and get ready for uh, San Diego State coming to University Stadium in two weeks. Probably George Jones will be back in the lineup by then for the Aztecs. Again, our final score, it's Rice 38, New Mexico 21. We'll be back to wrap this up from Houston after this timeout.
Okay. Very good. Thanks a lot, Steve. You got anything unofficially real quick? Ryan? Okay, if you get anything, I'll throw it my way. How about, how about... Two, one, two. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. You got the date for the last time. Yeah, thank you, Howard. You too. That was a good job tonight. Faithful here at Rice Stadium enjoying the Rice Owls celebrating their victory tonight 38 21 over New Mexico. The Lobos now 4 and 2 overall and 1 and 2 in the Western Athletic Conference, while Rice improves to 2 and 3 and 1 and 1 in the WAC. Let's take a look now at our Kelly Lickers play of the game. And the Lobos uh, didn't do a lot defensively tonight, but uh, one of the big plays right here, the ball comes loose. And it bounces right into the hands of Nelson, who takes it for a first down late in the game. And that's the best, our Kelly Lickers play of the game. And the Lobos uh, earlier in the game had one pop out like that. Actually, Rice did. And the Lobos uh, picked it up for a nice gain uh, fumble. And uh, at that point, you thought the Lobos had some momentum going. Well, exactly why that was a big play. Because if the Lobos could force the turnover there, and then the offense gets the ball back, who knows what happens from there. Instead, the Lobo offense shut out in the second half. And look at that, they allowed 481 yards rushing to Rice. Last time the Lobos gave up that many yards was back in 1991, when they gave up 525 yards to Air Force. Funny enough though, Mike, the Lobos won that game over Air Force 34-32. <laughs> well, that, that option, that triple option, uh, spread option, whatever you want to call it, which is what Air Force ran the last time they had those big numbers, that is tough to stop, especially when you don't face it very often. Well, and that's the good news. They don't have to face it again this year. So on the bright side, at least the Lobos get the option out of the way, and they don't have to worry about it again. Boy, I feel like I'm at a drive-in movie theater right now. <laughs> the lights just went off. They're playing Star Wars theme. And I, I believe fireworks are going to follow. That's right. Well, that's going to do it from Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. We're glad you were with us tonight on Q13. A disappointing night for the Lobos, falling to Rice 38-21. to But New Mexico is still 4-2 and two, and an improved team this year, uh, carrying the load uh, on a, with a very good offensive front. And uh, have a chance to see them go on out because the Lobos have played outstanding football this season. This may be the one aberration. Again, our final score, 38-21 for Andrew Paul, Howard Zuckerman, and the rest of the crew. I'm Mike Powers. Thanks for being with us tonight. See you next time from SMU.